violation form you'll fill out and turn into Janiel or uh, the lead or myself, whoever you see. Um, they'll turn this into us if there is a violation. And we'll go through this in training, but this is if there's zebra mussels on the boat and they launch or things like that. Um, and then this is just a copy of one that was turned in in the past just to kind of show some of you, especially the newer folks, how we kind of fill it out. The other forms that you have a couple copies of are the one-way transport forms. So this is if they have AIS, there's something on their boat and they say, I'm going to go home and clean it up or I'm going to go to Cross Lake and get a decon to get this removed. You can give them that form. So let's say they get pulled over on the way and they have zebra mussels on their boat. They can show that form saying, I'm going to get them cleaned up. Otherwise, they will get a ticket. It is illegal. Um, is there any other forms I missed that you have in front of you? I don't think so. Perfect. Um, another thing, I just want to make sure you are all up into training. I don't know if you are still having issues. If you are having issues, me or Janiel will meet with you at some point throughout today. We'll, you'll get paid for all this time, no matter if you're clocked in or not. But we want to make sure everyone's trying to clock in. So if you have issues, we can work with you. Um, if you have any questions on the schedule that we've pushed out, um, hey, that's too far away from my home or something like that. Maybe you've already reached out to Janiel, but check in with us on a break real quick or in between training or after this training. Let us know. Um, uh, same with quick time. I know if I said if you are still having issues, let us know. We'll work with you as best we can. Today's kind of go, go, go between this training and DNR. Um, but we'll help you as best we can. Um, and then also, I think you're all been pretty good at it. You're here just checking your emails. Like I said, that's our main way to communicate with people. We're going to try to use that texting service a little bit as well because that's more of an instant that you'll see rather than an email. Um, and then just for housekeeping restrooms, the men's restroom is straight out these doors. The women's is straight out around the vending machines if you need to use it. And then if you're parked out here in one hour, you're fine. A few of you might have parked over here. We'll just move it on a break that we take, probably, just they're not getting in trouble because it is really busy at our counter right now with tax being due. So if you are parked out there um, when we take a break here, move it, either move it a spot, move it across the road, wherever you can find room. 
Um, don't park in any reserve spots out here. Um, and then some of you will be done after this training at noon. If you've been here a few years, you do not have to do the DNR training this afternoon. Uh, with the rest of you, you'll have a lunch break here for about an hour after we're done, and then you'll go across the road to the DNR training. <clears throat> all right, any questions on all that stuff, all those forms? We'll get going through this training here again. Yeah, the form with your information on it and everything. Are we supposed to have one of them? The emergency contact yeah. form? Yep, there should be one in your bag. You don't have one? Okay, we'll get you one. Yeah. You probably filled one out past years, but we'll get you another one. Yes. So are we supposed to commit our time today then on Friday? Or is that when we're going to Yes, time? thank you. Yes, um, and we'll go through submitting your time, but every Friday you submit your time for the week prior. So you typically you'll do this and then you should have done Friday. But if you don't submit it, it doesn't come through to us for approval and we'll be calling you, hey, submit your time. And when you're doing it, make sure because it'll bring up a list of your time cards and you check them. Make sure you don't click anything beyond that Friday because it will lock you out of those time cards. If you go to try to clock in Saturday, it's not going to let you. So it's a fun quirk of quick time. But yes, every Friday you're going to submit your time. That's you essentially signing off that these are the shifts I work. Everything's true, accurate. So yes, today, if you're done at noon, submit your time right when you're clocking out if you want. Otherwise, after your DNR training, you'll click submit. And we'll go through that here. Um, just a little bit about Crow Wing County and the mis uh, mission and goals of our watercraft inspection program. Our mission is to provide leadership in preventing the introduction and limiting the spread of aquatic invasive species in Crow Wing County by coordinating inspection, decontamination, and targeted treatment and education efforts. The goals of our program are to provide a level of consistency and familiarity for voters in and around designated AIS prevention areas and increase AIS awareness of boat accesses. Um, for 2023, some of you have heard this multiple times, but the state uh, allocates about $10 million out to counties uh, for the prevention of AIS. Each county kind of does it different. Most counties do exactly what we're doing. Um, they hire inspectors, they do treatment programs, uh, education to area schools and different events. Um, not all 87 counties in the state receive money from AIS and it is allocated based on the number of uh, boat landings in the county and then how many parking spots there are at that boat landing is how they allocate that money out. Um, each year we receive approximately 450,000. It's been a little less and it's been a little more. So we're right around that. Um, and I'll let you know our program is one of the most robust in the county. We hire our county, excuse me, the state. Uh, we hire the most inspectors out of anyone we've ever talked to. Typical programs are about 20 to 25 inspectors that they hired. That's all the landings they cover. So for us to have 43 landings plus a couple others when they ask for expanded coverage, we typically like to get about 50, 60 inspectors so we can cover time off for people. So those landings are constantly covered. Part of our planning. So our watercraft inspection, we have 500 lakes and rivers in Crow Wing County. We have over 182 landings. 128, 128 of them are public landings and 105 of them have actual trailer spaces. So that kind of narrows it down to what we could potentially cover in the county is 105. We partner with the Minnesota Aquatic Invasive Species Research Center, which I will call MAZER from here on out because that's a lot to say, and the United States Forest Service to they do, they take a lot of our data from the surveys that you guys are doing, different other surveys that they do, different research that they do, and they um, compile that to get the location of infested and uninfested lakes and where people are traveling, traveling to and from. Are they coming from an infested lake out of the county, into the county? Are they coming from uh, infested lake in the county and going out of the county? A lot of that boat traffic. So we use that. Um, and we use how busy is the access, how many boats per hour are going in and out of that access, and what are they infested with or not infested with. That's how we just figure out our risk and take that 105 landings and narrow it down to 43. Um, 
So for 2023, how I said we usually get about 450,000, we got $462,902 from the state for our program for 2023. We had allocated 16,155 watercraft inspection hours on those 43 landings across our county. Um, we are hopeful this year to be able to fill them all. Last year was a little rough. Um, thank you to those that stuck it out last year. We didn't have a lot of inspectors. Um, we're trying to do a few things different, hopefully to get more inspectors on board so you guys can stay at kind of more landings close to home and not have to move you all around all the time. Um, newly infested lakes in Crowing County. In 2022, we had seven new lakes and rivers infested with zebra mussels, uh, bath, clear, Clinker, East Rabbit, West Rabbit, Rabbit River, and Turner. Uh, um, none of those are landings that we really cover. And then I'm not going to go through 2021 and 2020, but that info is there just to show you past year's data. So um, seven new water bodies is a pretty high number, but we're doing what we can. We're out there to minimize that risk. We're not going to be able to stop everything unless we're there 24-7 and every voter stops for us at that landing. Uh, the 2023 plan allocates 16,155 inspection hours, which I said, this is an increase in hours from 2022. We were at 15,000 and some. The main reason is when the 4th of July holiday falls. So we always try to cover a day before, day after. This year, I believe it's on a Tuesday. So now that Monday coverage is an extra day we didn't have last year. So that increases our hours. We did increase our inspector wages, $2 per hour this year from last year. Um, so hopefully that's helping bring some people in. Um, everyone knows how the economy is, so you can go work at McDonald's for more than I started at my four-year degree. Um, uh, how we allocate our hours and that risk that I was talking about, high risk um, by the traffic and the infestation of the lake. So we have four different risks that we or categorize our landings into. We have high risk landings. We have 22 of those. So those are the ones we're gonna staff first. They're the busiest, they're the most at risk. They start this weekend and they're gonna go through Labor Day weekend. And they're Friday through Sunday. Our moderate risk landings, we have six of those. Uh, they are gonna be staffed Saturday and Sunday starting this weekend through Labor Day weekend. Our low risk landings, there's nine of those. They are gonna be staffed Saturday and Sunday, but they will not start until Memorial weekend. And our very low risk landings, we have four of those. Those are just going to be on the main holiday weekends. We're going to staff those. Some of them is just to get data to see how busy are they really? Do we need to bump them up? Because we don't have a lot of data on them. Or we have data and we know they're not busy, so we don't need to be out there every weekend. Here's a map kind of showing the high, medium, low, very low risk. High is the red, medium is the orange. This is in your manual because it's kind of hard to see all the dots. Um, low is the yellow and very low is the green. You can kind of see where most of our lakes are. Uh, most of those high risk are up there in the Cross Lake area, but we have a few scattered down around here, our southeast corner here. Our decontamination. So we have our Cross Lake Permanent Decontamination Station. We've allocated 423 hours there. That is going to be open three days a week, Friday through Sunday. Um, we used to do Thursday through Monday a few years ago. We dropped Monday off. Now we're dropping Thursday off. We just don't have the traffic there to have someone sitting there. Um, this is mostly a courtesy location. So people are going to come there on their own will and say, hey, please give me a decontamination. Uh, and it's also going to be maybe someone's trying to launch at the campground there in Cross Lake and they're full of zebra mussels. They might be essentially forced to go over there and get a decontamination. Uh, we're going to have that location open Memorial Weekend through Labor Day weekend. And we have two mobile decontamination units. This year we bought another one. The, if you were with us last year, we had one here. You can see it in the bottom there. Uh, the one we bought this year has what's called a reclaim mat. So if you've ever seen a mat landing, so it's the same unit. It just has a little extra piece on the back. And we're going to lay a big mat on the ground for the boat to go on. And it's going to reclaim that water back into the tanks. We're going to keep using it. There's a bunch of filters on there to clean it. And the reason we did that is the one we have now, we can only use at five landings. So with that reclaim mat, we're allowed to bring it to multiple landings. As long as we have room, we can literally bring it anywhere. 
So that's the reason we did that, to get more decontamination. So that's really what's going to keep that AIS out of our water, is it's cleaning those bolts. Um, the two mobile decontaminations are going to be staffed starting this weekend, Friday through Sunday, except for today, uh, through Labor Day weekend. Uh, we only have one mobile out there this weekend, just with the new mobile. There are some things I found after training yesterday. Yeah, we're not ready to put that out yet. So we'll have that out soon. Uh, education and outreach, this is another high priority of our program, working with Lake Association schools, different groups, and um, yourselves as well. Just getting, we're, our main goal of this program is for you guys to educate those voters. We're not law enforcement in any way. We don't have any authority, but we really want to educate those voters as to why we're here. We're here to just keep the lakes clean. We don't want you to bring it from one lake to another. Um, but we also, like I said, work with Lake Associations. So we grant funds to these lake associations that work with us in a few different ways. We have a Starry Search program that started last year, and we try to involve you guys in that a little bit. Um, we have rates that we throw out. We have meetings with these lake associations to show them how to do it. And if they complete the program correctly, we give them a grant of $300 per landing. Not huge, but it doesn't really cost them anything to do it. It's just a way to get them out there, them to identify the AIS. Uh, and then working with you guys occasionally, we'll have the rake in the truck when we're coming around visiting you and say, hey, it's pretty slow. Hey, let's throw the rake out, see what we can, uh, if we find anything, let's identify it. Um, we, like I said, we work with different schools, youth groups, civic organizations. We try to get out there and do presentations and fun stuff with kids all the time. Uh, Starry Trek is a statewide event. That's kind of where our Starry Search program within the county came from. Uh, we do plan to do that this year. Last year it did have a lot of interest, so we did not do it. Um, but it's just like our Starry Search program, except it's on a statewide level. We are just a host point for it. We give you guys education materials and handouts at the landing. Um, we try not to overload you right away because I know voters don't want a bunch of pamphlets when they're going in the lake. Some will, most will not. So we're trying not to overload you and we're trying to find nice ones, not a bunch of little cards, different things. So as you're handing stuff out, let us know, like, hey, voters really like this one. Can you give me 20 more? Just always keep us updated. We always have more we can get you. Or if you're like, no one likes this one, let us know so we don't order more. Things like that. So you guys are the ones. Here are eyes and ears at the landings, letting us know what works, what doesn't. Or give us ideas of, hey, they, I always get these questions. You have a handout or a pamphlet or something on that. Um, we do a voter survey in August that we have you guys hand to the voters. They're not required to do it, um, but we just ask just to get the general idea of what do these voters know and ask them if they know about AIS, if they know about the protocols. Essentially, do they like that we're at the landing? Do they think we're helping? Things like that. And we are planning on updating our signage at our county-owned landing. Uh, we only have a couple that are in our AIS plan, like Jones Bay. That is a Crow and County-owned and maintained landing. So some of the signs you see there are Crowing County signs. And then we have signs at all our other. We have 18 Crowing County owned landings. Uh, some of them are almost, it might just be a canoe that you can get in the water. You might not be able to pull a big boat with a trailer in there. But we have signing at, signage at all of them. And what we notice is they all look a little bit different. All might have a little bit different info depending on when the sign got put up. So we want to get them all matching. So that's one of the goals this year. Uh, to expand on that Starry Search program, uh, like I said, it's a $300 incentive for a landing that they search for Starry Stonewort and other AIS. So the main goal is Starry Stonewort because we do not have that in Crowman County. It's getting close. Um, so that's the main goal, but we're also out there looking for any AIS, just getting that identification done. We sample June through August because that's when everything starts growing and it's really predominant out there. Uh, county staff will have hands-on training with those lake association members on sampling, identification, and then what reporting they have to do back to us to get that incentive. And then, of course, our main goal is always stay ahead of Starry Stoneward and any infestations in Crown County. Uh, milk oil treatments. This is another grant we give to lake associations for doing their survey and or treatment for control of Eurasian water milk oil. And this year we have increased that up to $3,500 total per lake. We have nine lakes that are eligible for that. Um, and then we give $500 for Lake, lake Aussie, I'm not going to say that right, and Emily Lake. 
And the reason they get $500 for a survey is because of the treatment they've been doing, they have not found any Eurasian water milfoil on their lake in the last few years, or it's very, very little or they, not even treatable. Uh, so that's why they are at the $500 limit. We also do what's called early detection with the lake association. So we do zebra mussel villager sampling and spiny water flea testing in July on up to 25 lakes that are uninfested with zebra mussels or spiny water flea. And the reason for that is let's get out there and test it. Let's find it. If we find it, let's just try to treat it. What can we do? There is no known treatment for zebra mussels at this time. There is some things they've tried and it works but maybe this thing works, but it kills all this kind of fish. So they don't want to do that. So they're trying to find that happy medium so that they're not killing everything in the lake along with the zebra mussels. Uh, the spiny water flea sampling is for up to 10 lakes that are uninfested by spiny water flea. Uh, just to kind of go through who is who here, who you're going to be working with this year. Uh, Steven, I'm going to wreck his last name. I don't know how to say it. He is our lead this year. He's over at the DNR training right now. Uh, so you'll meet him tomorrow throughout the weekends here. You'll get to know him. He's been with us before last year, maybe the year before. Um, and he is a retired police officer, if I remember correctly. Um, so you'll get to know him. He has Nicole's old cell phone number, if you recognize that. Uh, Janelle is new to the program this year. Uh, she is the meet review coordinator. So she's your new Nicole for those of you that were here last year. We do have someone else coming on that will be the same position as Janiel. Uh, he'll be starting in mid-June and his name's Alex. So we'll get him rolled into the program and you'll meet him as soon as he comes on as well. Uh, myself, the Jessica Shea, I am the operations manager. So I oversee the whole program. And then Carrie Horak, you may have worked with a little bit. She is in our HR department. And then Brittany McCuskey is up in payroll. Um, you may not have to reach out to Carrie or Brittany much, but just so you have their information, you can always come to us. And if we can't help you with one of their issues, we can transfer you over to them. Um, we started this last year and it has helped greatly. So you don't have to memorize all those phone numbers or try to figure out who to call. We ask that you call this hotline number. This hotline number rings on Janiel's cell phone, the lead cell phone, Alex, when he starts his cell phone and all of our desk phones. So when you call that number, 99% of the time someone's going to answer because it's ringing on so many phones. So that's why we did that. Um, if someone doesn't pick up, make sure you leave a message because um, then that's going to be another notification when that message comes through. So if we don't hear the phone call or something doesn't happen, at least like, oh, now I've messaged someone called. Um, if you don't leave a message and you don't call back within a few minutes, or it'd be like, okay, we'll try to call you back. We might not think it's as big of a, an emergency or what's going on. Um, if it is an emergency, though, um, something extreme is happening at the landing or with you or whatever, keep calling until someone answers. Um, if it's, okay, I'm trying to call, I have to leave and you stop calling because you, whatever it might be, and you can't call anymore, that is what it is. We'll figure out what's going on eventually. But that's the number we want you to call as much as possible, not directly to... Janiel's cell phone and leave a message because let's say she's off that day, no one's going to get that message. So calling this line is the best thing you can do if you need to reach any of us. Um, we are your first line of communication for all watercraft inspection related concerns. Any quick time, quick books time problems, which I know you won't have after today will be perfect. So. Um, any tablet issues you have, charging, surveys, anything like that, reach out to us. Uh, those handouts that I was talking about, if you want more, if you have suggestions for something different, let us know. Scheduling, um, we're both kind of new to scheduling this year. Nicole probably knew exactly what landing some of you wanted to work at. Uh, I remember some of them, so I tried to help Janiel there. Uh, but let us know. I mean, we always try to schedule you closer to home. We don't want to send you to the other side of the county unless you told us, no, do it, send me there. Uh, we're not going to do that. Um, and also with the amount of inspectors we have this year, we should be able to keep you as much as possible. Like um, if there's a landing you really like and we put you on there first week and everything goes great, we will try our hardest to keep you at that landing until you tell us, hey, send me somewhere else. But otherwise, we're going to try our best to keep everyone mostly at the same landings unless you tell us you want to be moved. Uh, public relations, 
uh, anything, if anyone comes up to you and says, hey, can I do an interview? Send them our way. You can quickly say, sure, I'm an inspector, and kind of leave it at that. I give them the very high level, kind of what you're doing there. But if they're trying to dive deep into questions, please send them our way. And we'll touch on that later, too. Um, if it's an emergency, though, like a dire emergency, something's happening to a voter, obviously call 911. Uh, the deputy that comes with chat, uh, talk about that as well. We do have a non-emergency line for the sheriff that you can call as well if it's a drunk voter comes into the landing and they're not, it's not so bad that you need to call 911, but you want to let the sheriffs know and they'll let their deputies know that are out on the area late. Um, so for those instances, you would use a non-emergency line. If you have a program question, so here's just a few different scenarios to call or text us, preferably call if you text that. 824-1104. It's not going to go through. That's only a call line. Um, if you're going to be late, sick, or unable to make your shift, let us know as soon as possible. Do you have any questions about your location or am I at the right landing or how the heck do I get to this landing? Reach out to us. We do have directions in your manual for every landing. It's all in there. Um, if you have any questions on the program itself, any of our policies or procedures, reach out to us. Um, if you have any questions on AIS violations, uh, like whether it is a violation or not, reach out to us. Usually we can answer, and if not, we might direct it to the DNR so they can help you out a little more. Uh, questions on the decontamination unit, we will do our best. We're both very new to the decontamination unit. We took a lot of videos, though, that we plan on sharing with you guys. Uh, we just got to get them uploaded. Um, so if you have any questions on them, something's not working right, again, if there's, hey, we don't have this equipment, but I think it would be really helpful to have with the decons, let us know. Doesn't mean we can always get everything because we're limited with our funds, but we will do our best because it is mostly for safety reasons. Um, answering voter questions, make sure you're friendly, polite, and helpful. Like I said, our goal is to educate and inform the public. Uh, use your manual and your program materials as much as possible. Like I said, we have our uh, Crow Wing County Manual, the two DNR manuals, are all three of them are downloaded on your tablet. I'll show you later how we get to them. But you can easily pull them up on your tablet if you want to reference them, or we have paper copies in the back as well. If we run out of paper copies, let us know, and we can still get you one. I still want to print 100 and have them sit there. If there's a problem at the access, if you're dealing with an angry voter, um, someone who's very persistent, call the Sheriff's Office. This is that non-emergency line that I was telling you about. This is in your manual too, but feel free to write it down. So this is, he'll touch on it a little bit more. He'll be starting here in about five minutes. Um, like I said, this is if it's not an emergency, but you just want to alert them that like, hey, this person went out on the lake and all 10 of these guys are wasted, whatever it might be. Let them know, call that line. They'll deal with it. They'll decide if it's out of line or not. That was really good timing. I probably talked really fast because I want to get down in time for him. Uh, so for our quizzes, so there's we're going to have four, five quizzes today at the end of each module, if you want to call it that. So if you guys want to pull out your iPads, they should all be powered on. If not, let's power them on. Once you're in your tablet, go to the internet. 
I think it's oh. called Safari, if I remember correctly. It should be on the bottom of your screen, I believe. If you get one of your tablets, see where it's kind of at. Yeah, on the bottom, it's that compass looking symbol. Uh, right in the middle, right in the middle on the bottom. Oh. Yep. And then you're going to type in the web address at the top. Make sure you're in the web address at the top, not the Google search bar. And you're going to type in. Yes, you do. Trust yourself. You're going to go to crowing.us slash AIS. Oh, Wi Fi? Yep, it's exact. They should all be connected, but some of them might pop up. Put you into the Crowing County website. That's what she's Oh, yeah, it'll have you accept the terms. Yep. So go ahead and do that. This is not what I want to do. Where do we go to? I got the survey up, but I can't find that stuff. Yep. I'll you get out of my survey. Yep, you're not going to be in the DNR survey. Nope, not in there. We're going to go back out of there and sit at the bottom, and it'll bring you back to the. It's updating something here. Oh, it's downloading surveys. So the internet right here. Okay. And then yeah, type in right here. Crowing. Crowing. Okay. Slash AIS. Which one is the internet? Uh, the little compass looking thing at oh, the very right bottom. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I'll have you type in that 2468 code. Who do you appreciate? Yeah. I was waiting for somebody to say yeah. that. Well, that's the first time I came in. Who was the guy that was ahead of here? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's he's the one that said yeah. I believe it. He's a singer. Then you'll go to up here. Yep. Yes. And then you'll type in the crowing.us slash AIS. Okay, you don't have to show me where. It's there on the bottom. And we're going to go in here multiple times throughout today, so you can just kind of leave it open once you have it open. Yep, and then you'll type in the crowing.us slash AIS. I have no idea how I got there. What did you do? No, you're good. You should be able to. You're good. Just type in the website up there. Okay, no, I'm not. His is doing that too. I don't know if it finished downloading the surveys. So I think that's it. There you go. Now you'll get out of there. That's the DNR survey. How do I get out of there? I know I did it last year. And then you'll go to the internet so. <laughs> Once I get in there, it's fine. Right. that website. Okay. Um, yes, no. Yeah. What? Did you look how bad this They're thing? terrible when we were, yeah, I think uh, we're going to get new screen protectors next year. Because they cleaned them up. This is my question. Yeah, they that is cleaned them up. Yeah. I'm going to go grab one of those rings because I need to go to one. Did they have some in here? Right there. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Okay, once you're on the website, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, oh, they did right there. Yep, scroll down to the bottom there. There's a heading that says inspector resources. A little bit more. So this is our last one right here. So we want to do training with one. Should have put the screen down. Sorry. And then you'll proceed. Nope. You gotta click that. So now proceed to the site. I didn't know. I didn't know there was that pop-up. Sorry. So once you get to the website, scroll down, kind of almost to the bottom. There's an inspector resources headline, and then you'll do training quiz number one, and it'll come up with a pop-up. And yes, proceed to new website. Is this where we're supposed to get one? Yep, get one. This is where we're supposed to get to? Yeah. Oh, no, that's not it. That's your call. I think you can see your site. Sorry. Oh, right. oh, that is a great Wi Fi policy. Seems like that's on there. 
Who was? Oh, okay. There, now you'll type in our website up there. They all look the same, so from far away, it looks great. What am I supposed to do now? Okay. Oh, there's just a space here. She had it all right. There's just an extra space. So it's the same place we're going to go for all of our quizzes, so if you keep it open, now it's rolled all the way down, and you've your resources, we're going to do training quiz number one, yes, we want to proceed, there you go. Okay, so you go down into Siri, is that what you're doing? Yep. Where are you going? 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 No, I'm going to say that you probably want me to get in there. Trolling.us. I can't get mine to move. Yeah. 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 Um, this little company on the bottom. Okay. And then up here, you're going to type that website. Oh, just type the website? Okay. Yep. Oh, oh. Are you getting in there? All right. How do I Um, yeah, that's not what it didn't go through correctly. So, oh, it's after you just have to draw. We have to draw by type wing. Pro wing. Dot US. I got all these different things, but I don't see what's more looking. Then she's a dot again. <laughs> There. Oh. Now you should be able to enter here. I don't know what you do. There you go. Now you scroll down towards the bottom, you'll see Inspector Resources. Yep. Inspector Resources. Yep. And then training quiz number one. Oh, that didn't. I helped. No, press. Somebody else is getting in. Yeah. Now I got you. It'll work. Oh, I know. You Okay. Three, three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Providing funds, it was 2012. <laughs> no, no, probably not one you're going to get asked much about anything, so you probably safe there. But um, oh, it was 2012. Yeah, it was 2012. Yeah, it was 2015. Why did we get it? This is 2015. It's like, oh my gosh, it is 2015. Most of you answered 2012. Thank you for calling me. It is 2015. Um, otherwise, I must not have talked too fast because you guys are getting them all right. Great job. Um, if you haven't finished, go ahead and kind of keep going through it, but I'll let Brad come up and start talking here, and you guys can drill him with some questions. Good morning, everyone. All right. I'm Sergeant Brad Beesing with the Drone County Sheriff's Office. I head up our Rec Division, oftentimes referred to as our boat water department. Uh, basically, our primary role out there on the lakes and the water is safety enforcement. So that uh, primarily entails uh, life jackets, registration, boat operations, uh, things along those natures, or along those, that nature. You'll oftentimes see our guys putting in at, at the public accesses. Um, this year, we have a team put together right now uh, consists of eight of us. Probably the, this is the biggest team we've ever had since I've started working in the boat and water uh, area. Uh, of, of those team members, five of them are non-licensed uh, individuals. They'll be dressed in sheriff uniforms, although they, they won't be licensed. They'll just have the same authority that you guys have out there on the water. Uh, they will be making boat stops and can assist with uh, issues that do arise out there. Oftentimes, just because they have that uniform on, sometimes if they have a disgruntled individual they come across, uh, they're sometimes more willing to listen to them if they, if they got that uniform on kind of thing. Uh, 
Absolutely. So in addition to those those five guys, we have three licensed deputies that will also be out there working on the water. Uh, not always with the rec assistants, the unlicensed guys, but um, more often than not, we'll have at least one licensed guy out there that can assist. Fortunately, we don't have enough staff to be manned 24-7, 365 kind of thing, but uh, we'll try to focus our, our time out there on the water to the weekends and uh, the holidays and uh, during the high uh, boat operation times. When our guys are switching from lakes, they should be going through a decon just like uh, uh, what you'd expect any other boat to do before they go into to another body of water. Every night when our boats come back, we do run those through a hot water wash down. Uh, we have a setup right over here at the Boat Water Garage at uh, Land Services, or uh, Civil Services over there. Uh, and then we also have a couple satellite locations that the guys will also hit up uh, when they're out there, yeah. transparent lakes. And when our guys pull up with their boats, Feel free to run them through the ringer and check them over. If they're if they're slack in any way, you know, please let them know and uh, they'll make sure they stay up to speed with their AIS uh, stuff also. Um, we encourage our guys to meet with you guys at the accesses. Uh, just touch base with you guys, just see how things are going. If you guys have noticed any problem boaters coming in or out of the lakes, uh, if there's been any complaints from people coming off, uh, sometimes you know they'll there'll be a boat out there causing problems. They may mention it to you guys while you're at the accesses. If something like that does happen and our guys stop out, uh, they're, you know, we encourage them to talk with you guys and just you know, get a feel for what's going on or what you guys have seen before before or when they're coming in off, and on and off the lakes. Uh, again, our main focus is on the safety aspect of things. So you guys will get those uh, individuals who have some AIS violations. We recommend those be deferred to the DNR and then let the DNR follow up with those uh, partially because we don't always have that deputy on that could even actually physically do anything if it's the AIS aspect of things. But, um, and our, our focus is more so on the safety aspect. And ha having said safety, in the event that you get those disgruntled voters that are at the accesses or any, any confrontational issues such as that, uh, by all means feel free to call us. We don't want anybody to get hurt. And that's our main goal is that anybody stays safe while they're out there working. Uh, so if, if you get that, again, confrontational individual, uh, call 911. That's the easiest way to get a hold of us. And not only will we get uh, you know, the attention of the boat and water guys if we look there in the area, but it also we can also send out a regular deputy in a patrol car, and they can come and assist or mitigate the situation, whatever uh, it is that arises out there. So when it's uh, along the lines of safety and um, things like that, yeah, definitely 911 is the, the number to call. And that'll get you in touch with the appropriate resources, and uh, they'll they'll take it from there. Um, kind of real quick overview. So we do have multiple boats. Uh, typically, we'll have uh, two crews on on the weekend, and we'll try to space them out throughout the county. So we'll have a crew up north and a crew typically down south. But the, that gets shifted around throughout the day. They get typically get go where the calls send them. So if they start up in the whitefish chains, uh, you know it is possible they could end up down in you know Roosevelt or uh, or in, you know any one of the many lakes could be down in Lansing for that matter. Just if yeah, that's where the call sends them, they have to kind of go to there uh, based on that. If they occasionally if we're working for emergency calls, whether it be a medical or an injury. Uh, some of those, we'll let you guys know if we're kind of coming in hot and they need to get the boats in the water right away. Uh, and the, possibly coming in with lights or going out with lights. So if you see us kind of doing that, um, that gives us a little bit of leeway as far as the inspections and stuff goes. We can just get in, get going, and get out there and, and uh, address whatever issue is out there. Normally that doesn't happen, so normally it's a little bit more low-key when we go out there in the lakes. Um, all right, well that's kind of a real brief overview here for you guys today. We'll just kind of open it up. Uh, we'll start with some questions. Uh, how many of you guys have worked here other seasons? Oh, oh what have you guys have been here before? Okay. And first year people? Yeah. All right. Well, I had a problem with the boater that uh, just wouldn't stop. Ah. And I said, that, you know, you can't go in until we inspect. Yep. But. He was adamant and just I went like, in anyway. And well, he finally just got mad at me and pulled his boat out and 
spun out and drove away. But there was a question about if he had a uh, ballast tank and stuff, and he just didn't want to answer. Oh, gotcha. questions, and he wouldn't let me look behind the boat. He drove his boat deep into the water. Oh, wow. Was this individual by chance? Uh, was he? Working for a dock company by no. chance? No. That was a, cause we had one very similar to that last year, I believe it was. There was a guy yeah, that was working, putting in docks, and uh, you know, he was very confrontational and uh, was not good getting along with the program. But uh, when that happens, yeah, by all means, give us a call um, and we can send a guy down there to assist. And we can also um, reach out to the DNR. Uh, Fortunately, the way our systems are set up, we don't know where each each other's entities are at. So, um, you know, that phone call and then they'll start communicating back and forth and find out who we got where and where we got to have them so we can get them to you guys as soon as reasonably possible. I talked with one of the DNR uh, ladies last summer. She got switched from the Whitefish area to the west side of 371. We don't have a DNR on the east side of 371. Right. Yeah. But she'll come if she's close. Exactly. That's one nice thing. If even if they're not outside of their area, they'll still head to, head our way if, if we if we call them, and they're really good about that. So um, if it's outside their box or their area that they're working. Um, they may have hired somebody new. You know. Right. That's the kicker. It's been kind of a uh, the trend here in law enforcement of, as of late. The, we're just been having some difficulty getting some staff. Uh, just with the no climate and everything and uh, fortunately we're starting to see some well i think we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and we're starting to get some more staff uh, hence this is the biggest boat and water department we've ever had even though we don't have all our positions filled yet uh, so hopefully that trend continues so and be mindful if you're at some of the more, more remote or uh, desolate access, uh, accesses. Uh, just uh, you know, personal safety. You know, always we recommend keeping your cell phone on, you guys. Um, fortunately, our I would say like to say our crime rate is is fairly low, but occasionally we get some catalytic converters uh, stolen at unattended accesses and uh, just a few other odds and stuff, odds and end crimes like that, mostly property crimes, but the Occasionally, uh, people will come out of the lake and may report something to you guys, and then you can direct them to the sheriff's office, and then we'll send somebody out to take those official reports from them. So, we're just inspecting boats, but like, if you see something that was like, you know, this person's back of their boat in, and they're just three sheets of wind kind of stuff, are we supposed to kind of be proactive? So, yeah, we do ask that you guys be proactive, especially the, the DWI aspect of things, because it's a safety issue, really. And uh, so, yeah, if they're packing it in, they're pretty well over the legal limit. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can delay your inspection time and then reach out to the sheriff's office to give our guys a chance to start working in that direction. So, um, but we would, would request that you would take direct interaction or try to intervene directly. Uh, so if you could indirectly slow things down, uh, by all means, but not to the point where it becomes a problem for you guys out there. Okay. Uh, that's oftentimes too where people will be out there fishing all day or doing partying, drinking on sandbars and doing what they may, and then they decide that they're gonna head home and you know, they've been in the sun, they're dehydrated, and then only consuming alcohol, and they, they come up to the accesses and can barely get out of, the, out of their boat onto the, into their vehicle, yet they're still going to try. So and you'll see those individuals come in, and that's where we ask, yeah, just for that courtesy call to get a, get your guys headed down there um, so we can make contact with them and get them safely taken care of, basically. Now those, that way they're not a danger to themselves or anyone else. In a situation, <clears throat> excuse me, in a situation I had, um, I had a boater come in, he went and got his truck, there was left a person in the boat, and they were drunk. He got in the boat, almost and backed it up, almost hit another boat. Oh, yeah. And had several accidents, almost wiped out a boat of kids. Oh, yeah. I mean, little kids and everything else. And it was, it was just, a, so I was on there calling. Oh, definitely. It happened so quick, and, uh, you know, obviously when there are, uh, judgments impaired like that, things can go bad real quick. 
You know you know him too well when you call him and say, yeah, Don, <clears throat> what do you need us for today? <laughs> that's, yeah, but that's, good. that's always a bad thing. But <laughs> about seven years, I've met a couple of them. Yep. <laughs> Well, and another thing is you guys might notice that as the boats are going out, some of them will have expired registration. Uh, you know, if you wanted to point that out to the guys, you can. Um, you're not, not obligated to do it from our perspective. Um, for, from our perspective, that's an easy one for us to go out there and catch. Uh, um, it allows us that, uh, opens that window, gets us in the door kind of thing, so we can actually make the contact with those boat operators. Uh, but we definitely like to see them get their registration updated. Some of them just forget, and, and uh, they don't realize this uh, needs to be taken care of. So should we tell them that their registration is updated, or should we call you guys and you guys take care of it? Um, if you're comfortable, you can let them know. I wouldn't worry about calling us on that one. We'll just, uh, when we make come across them, we'll um, make that point at that time. Um, but if you're going through, I'm assuming you guys jot down the boat registration. If you just if you feel if you guys are comfortable pointing it out to them and say oh it looks like the registration may be expired uh, by all means feel free some of them have updated registrations they haven't put it on there yet or um, maybe a little months and they forgot to put it on kind of thing or they may just forgot to get it uh, renewed kind of things that happens quite frequently. Well, and, uh, I guess the um, number one thing is, is uh, if you're not sure whether or not you should call us while you're out there, worst thing that can happen is you call us and uh, we say, okay, well, yeah, there's nothing we can do about it, or oh yeah, we'll, we'll be right there. So don't hesitate to call us if if, uh, if you aren't sure. But again, from the sheriff's office perspective, our main focus is on that safety safety realm of things. Uh, as far as the weed aspect and the EIS aspect of things. We try to divert those to the DNR, but again, they not, may not always be readily available. Um, so we can assist. We don't get as nor near as much training in, in the the DNR statutes uh, related to the EIS stuff as those guys have. That say they're the resident experts in that in that realm. So we get a voter that's full of AIS and they don't want they, they don't want an inspection and they launch. Yep. And so you, you call, uh, that one I would recommend you call the DNR and uh, and the DNR, if they aren't available or in the area, then they will they will port it over to us. And then that's kind of how we would get that one. That was a good question. Is, is there any way of knowing whether the things we report are followed up on? Well, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because sometimes it's maybe that boat that launches out there, you know, with some questionable occupants, and um, we get you give us a call, and um, I guess there isn't really any set way that we would follow up with you guys. Sometimes we'll call you for additional information as we're going out to deal with whatever it is, or or sometimes some of the information we get, uh, we just just made it, we just make a note of it and put it on our board, like um, areas for targeted patrol for operator conduct things along those lines. So without specifically asking for a follow-up, oftentimes we won't follow up. Um, there's no real sense. I guess I want to know if my life is being put in jeopardy later. <laughs> oh, right. So yeah, after reporting somebody. Right, so if it's something specific, you know, it, I'd say it'd be on a case-by-case -case basis. So, um, you know, that's one thing you can call it in. You can ask to be anonymous. Um, you know, uh, or you can just call it in for information. And uh, then the guys can run with it, and oftentimes we'll take the information, depending on what it is. We still have to build our own uh, reasonable suspicion or probable cause to, to interact with these guys. Um, so a lot of that still falls on our deputies, the reason or the basis for the stop. Uh, sometimes it can be based on the information that we get from you guys, uh, but it's all kind of subjective. It depends on the scenario and uh, what's being reported. I guess just for feedback, if you could find the opportunity to just a quick call back to say we did get the info, we are following up on it. Thank you for something. I mean, just to know that you yes. got it because. No, I agree. And, and when when you guys call dispatch, dispatch automatically makes a digital log of every call that comes in, and then those are the officer that's assigned to it. So yes, I understand the desire to know that the information is being acted upon. Right. Um, can't say that I can I ask my guys. I don't need to know the results. I just want to right. know. Being followed up on. Yeah. 
So I was saying they will on a case by case basis, based on what the information is and uh, the circumstances surrounding it. Um, I know that's not a very good answer, but uh, um, as you can imagine, they get different complaints throughout the year, and uh, again, we kind of discuss case by case basis based on what the circumstances are. It's good to see you guys come around once in a while to our uh, landings. I know that uh, we get a lot of jet skiers and uh, they slow up off the top of the when they see that boat coming. Yep. And I've worked a lot with Nick, I think, that plan. Yep. It's really it's not on. Definitely. Yeah. Nick, uh, many of you guys have probably met, or many people have probably met Nick Lasso. He's been with us now for several years. So he's one of our three deputies that we have on the water working this year. So he's a very nice individual, and uh, yeah, it doesn't take long for people to realize that the sheriff's office boats on the lake. So sometimes we'll get to some of these smaller lakes, and uh, you know, like by the time you make a loop around, and uh, you know, it's kind of like rats from a sinking ship. There's just you know, the lake was packed, and all of a sudden there's nobody else out there but us. And uh, um, so then we don't spend a lot of time on the lake just because there's no traffic out there for us to, to interact with. So. Um, if we can make it around some of those lakes twice and still have a boat out there, we're doing good. I have a question. Do you guys have um, certain sites that are more problematic than others? For as, as far as I mean, as far as where I'm going to be working versus, uh, you know, maybe some quieter lakes, you know, is there a few that maybe we could know about? So I want to say specifically, I, I know we've had like we had some issues down like South Bond Lake and some of the more remote lakes. Okay. Um, so I mean, the really busy access is that arguably there's a lot of people coming and going, and they kind of already know the routine. I would say so. There's that still the potential for problems just because you have the larger volume at the, the bigger lakes. So to say that one's more problematic than than, than others, uh, relax, relax, relax. Uh, relax. Uh, uh, relax. Uh, uh, Crosswalk, like, go. So oh. if there's certain spots like is Gull a really busy lake? Do you have a lot of really people getting some hammered? Yes. Yeah, so. You know, I mean, we have to be more aware than Lower Cullen Lake, which you probably don't have a lot of boats on there. And, you know, I mean, I'm just trying yeah, to... Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, and I guess we haven't graphed up the data to specifically to see which ones we have the most complaints or problems come in at. Um, i say that I guess the potential is fairly similar on most of the lakes for the problems. Some you're going to be extremely busy on yeah, some of the bigger accesses and... Uh, um, just with that larger volume of people coming through, there's that, again, that higher potential that you're going to have a difficult person to deal with. Um, yeah, West Shore. Oh, yeah, West Shore. Um, so, yeah, there's, I hate to say it, but yeah, occasionally you'll, it happens on a lot of the accesses where, you know, you're going to have that person just doesn't want to go with the program. And, uh, but the program now has been out long enough. People are aware that it's there and that they have to comply. So I'd, I'd like to say that yeah, you're having less and less problems, but you know you still get anytime you deal with people that even when they know what the rules are, some people just try to circumvent them. So, yes. Do you ever check overloaded weights in a boat? Overloaded weights. So that's a, that's a tough one for us to check. So most boats have a scale or a, a label on there. It says ten people and uh, you know a thousand pounds or something along those lines. Um, we can count heads on the boat, but none of us carry scales. So, um, although if it says a thousand pounds and ten people, and they're my size, I know the boat's going to be overloaded. So, um, <laughs> so we, we do keep that in mind. You know, if it's ten kids and uh, um, and an adult, yeah, it's you know that's manageable. So, I had three uh, three hundred pounders get into a twelve foot boat, <laughs> and it almost sunk at the landing, and they took <laughs> off. I probably should have called you guys right away <laughs> for a rescue. <laughs> I think they were going to sink. I think uh, they were sinking. <laughs> Did they catch any fish? I didn't ask. <laughs> they didn't come back while I was still on duty, so thank goodness. 
Maybe there's a repeat back. Only three people. Only three people. There's no other yeah. questions. Um, we'll That's look forward to seeing you guys out there on the water. I just have one question. Oh, yeah, fire away. How the heck do you get the job of recreation sergeant? I want to be recreation <laughs> captain. Title? I didn't even ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just uh, reapply <laughs> for recreation, and how fun are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, unfortunately, most of my work ends up being paperwork, and we push it from one desk to the next, <laughs> managing schedules and grants and funds. And uh, I would rather be one of the rec assistants. <laughs> that I would rather have. Yeah, right. uh, that's where all the fun happens. So. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we'll like I said. Oh yeah. Go ahead. So is it race passenger? There is. We got one boat in there. You should be able to just nose right up to it. If you come in from the west, I'll make sure that's pulled all the way. Hopefully we or, don't because no one really wants it. It's a really nice brand new wakeboarding boat. And no oh. I, uh, none of us have trucks to pull. Oh. But, so we're hoping it doesn't rain, but I decided to ask just in case. Yeah. You know, and if it, pull it over there. Yeah, if it does, you have to, I got a truck if you need to pull it or you got somebody who got a truck hooked up to it or? No, not right now. Got I dropped it off. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, and the weather's Yeah, no, no. I'm right hoping now. it doesn't, but. Yeah. Okay, I'll reach out if we need to. I just. Yeah, you got my cell phone number or you guys have that? Nope. Go. All right, you guys want to take a quick break, use the restrooms. We'll take five minutes before I jump into the next thing. Where's the coffee and donuts? Not here. <laughs> Sorry. I thought the sheriff was here. The difference. <laughs> the sheriff's office is going to supply that. I can tell you how good they were. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds good. Thank, thank you. Thank good. you. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> We'll see you. Yes. So it was more or less of the same yeah. individual as that wall. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, I know You don't have to go any further than you're comfortable. You don't have to do any, you know, you don't have any policy. You know, if you get somebody that's going to talk to me, you know, like, just three. Yes, yes, it wasn't bad. We found two of them. So. <laughs> the other one is still, still floating. The man is still floating. But this is not the year of the show. Let's see the rec. Well, chance to see two rec deputies. Uh, rec assistants. Yeah, two two boats. So four people. Oh, come yeah. yeah. But we do say we have our cars out there too. So we'll have you know five road guys patrolling. I'm going to set up. They don't they just have like their southern crowing and northern horsemen and then uh, uh, northern Yes. Yeah. That is one thing about the practice. 
We don't want you guys to have to worry about doing any of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you ever go to Bay Lake, there's a guy that comes. Oh, you're on the back side. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I know. I do. Our guys better be checking on you guys. Good. You know, no, I don't know. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
on the web than your app. Functions exactly the same. But that's how you're going to view your schedule. We're not going to print a paper schedule. We're not going to email you anything. You need to go in there and look at your schedule. That's how you're going to know what landing you're at. Um, that's how you're going to submit your time off request. We'll go through that in a little bit, but everything you give us at the beginning of the season, we've already entered into the system. We know you need those days off. Things that come up throughout the season, you can submit them through there. 99.9% .9 of the time we're going to approve it. Um, if you're asking for almost every weekend off or every weekend off, we might have to have a chat and say, okay, this is what the job is. Is it going to work? Um, and then you're going to submit your time like you had asked earlier. Every Friday you submit your time. And we'll go through more details on all of this, but QuickBooks time is like your best friend that we hate because it doesn't work great right now. Once you're in there, it works pretty dang slick. 
Um, you should be clocked into training right now. We already went over that. Make sure your location setting is selected to always when you're clocked in. That's how we know. We check that every morning. So we know, okay, here's the people we have scheduled. Are they clocked in? Are they at the right landing for one? For two, are they clocked in at all? And this tells us if you are, because you clock in when you get to the landing and you clock in when you're about to leave the landing. And you don't clock out for breaks. You do not clock out for lunch. You're clocked in from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, so that lets us know if you made it to the landing, are you at the right landing? Um, so if we are checking it at 9.15 and we don't see you're clocked in, you might get a phone call. Or you're going to get a phone call, I should say, if we have an urgency. <laughs> um, submitting your hours every Friday. This is mandatory. Otherwise, you are going to get another phone call from us saying, submit your time. We can't do anything with it. You're not going to get paid if you don't submit your time. All time off requests are on the app or, again, website, whatever you prefer to use. You're going to have to use the app at the landing unless you have a laptop with internet connection at a landing. You can clock in that way if you really want. But it, we need to know your location, so I don't think that'll work very well. Um, here's some screenshots of QuickBooks time. We updated them all. They might look very slightly different depending on your app, if you're Google or Apple. I think that might be a little variation in some of these. We have Apple phones at the county, iPhones, so that might be a little variation. But generally, they should look like this. You want to allow T-Sheets to send you notifications. That's going to alert you. You're going to get an email, too, but when we publish a schedule, that will alert you saying, hey, there's a new schedule published, so you know. We will always stay at least two weeks ahead. Right now, you have your next two weeks schedule. We're going to stay two weeks ahead. We'll push more out farther ahead if we can. But that is our goal, is at least two weeks ahead of time. Um, if you click on this overview, down, this is kind of blurry, but the overview down here, maybe not. Um, that'll just kind of give you an overview. Are you clocked in, your schedule, your upcoming shifts? You don't have a time off balance because you don't get paid time off, so there's not going to be a balance there ever. Uh, track time just shows what uh, time sheets you've had. I wonder if this goes over this in the next slide. Schedule, the middle button, that's going to show your schedule. What are you scheduled? The colors that you're going to see in there is just to help us with scheduling. Red are your high priority. Orange, I don't think it follows the red, orange, yellow, green because we didn't have those colors to pick. But that's what the coloring is. It means nothing else. It's just helping us with scheduling. Um, but if you click that schedule button and you go to the day that it is and you click on that landing, it'll bring you right to the clock in screen. There's multiple ways to clock in, but that's one of the easiest. Time off. There's a button there. That's how you can submit your time off. Might have jumped ahead of myself. but um, Otherwise, if you just open it up and you click track time, this is where you can clock in and you're going to select your job. That's why I said if you go to schedule your job, everything's going to be selected and you just click clock in. If you do it this way, you're going to be like, where am I at? Hopefully you know where you're at. Um, but then you'll have to select your job and um, do it that way. So either way it works, this way just a couple more steps. Um, and then you can see the, a few of the landings that we're at. You want to make sure you always clock into the right landing. So if you were to click on, say, Bay Lake area, how there's a little arrow to the right, it's going to bring you to another menu, which has, four, well, I think it's four or five more landings under it, because there's we kind of group them all. Um, and that same thing in that track time screen, that's where you're going to clock out. And this is why I said it looks a little different on some of them. I think it's a little clock symbol in the bottom. It doesn't say clock in. It's like a green and red button. Uh, once you're done for the day and it's the end of your shift, um, I don't think it looks black on anyone's screen unless you have it set to dark mode. So general idea just showing you you're going to clock out at the bottom of the screen. It's either going to be a little red circle that looks like a clock or the words clock out in red. Either way, it's a red button at the bottom. Um, submitting your time, once again, how many times can we say it? Every Friday. Um, this is that list I was kind of talking about earlier. You're going to go to your timesheet, which is down in the bottom there. You'll see timesheets. Um, and once you've had a few timesheets that you've clocked in, you're going to get this list like this. And then you're going to select which ones you want to submit. And that's where I was talking about, let's say it's Friday, April 24th, you need to submit that timesheet. Make sure none of these are checked. They shouldn't be, but never check anything ahead because that's going to show your schedule in there as well um, or show days that you're scheduled to work. So don't check anything beyond if this was today. You check this one and make sure none of these were checked. And then you're going to click that submit in the top right. 
and that gives you the little clause, you're submitting your timesheets, you agree that they're complete and accurate, and once you submit, you can't edit, you can't put notes, you can't do anything, so something, you submit, and you're like, oh shoot, I see an error, let us know, we can do it on the back side. Am I looking at that wrong? But all the dates have been four to 24, so that would all be submitted. Right? It would be, yep. Okay. Yep. I don't, yep. I just want to make sure I was right. I was just trying to give a weird example of different, don't look at the dates below. Pretend they were all after. Uh, time off requests. Like I said, there's that button down in the bottom on some of the apps. Uh, you'll submit them through this app so that we can see them. We can approve them. Once we approve them, it pulls into our schedule as a big black box so we know, hey, they can't work this day. We're not going to schedule you. Uh, we asked that they were submitted at least two weeks in advance, if at all possible, because like I said, we try to stay ahead of the schedule at least two weeks. We know things might come up, a death or something, you're not going to know someone's going to die two weeks ahead of time, typically. So that's a, obviously a different situation. Um, this is just showing your time off request. You can submit, you don't have to submit time off for six. Um, we'll just put it, if you call in sick, we might change, we'll change your time card and change it to sick as the job. Um, so that's just showing the two different ones. So you'll submit under the time off and then you'll see your request and it'll show approved once we approve it or denied, which I said is very rare that we'll deny it, but unless it's successive. Um, when you enter it, make sure you always do them for nine hours because that's how long our shifts are. Um, make sure you add the date that you want off. A note is optional. You don't have to put a note in there. And then you're going to click send request on the bottom. And it'll show, like you see on May 10th here, it's going to show pending until we see it and approve it. You can also go in there and cancel them. So let's say like May 19th, you ask for that off. If you click on that, once you're in here, you can go in there and cancel that. And it'll pull it back and send us a notice. Uh, viewing your schedule. That is going to be, like I kind of talked about already, the schedule button on the bottom and the color coding of our landings. That's how we uh, keep track of our schedule and how we can easily see what shifts need to be filled. Uh, when you were hired, you signed that availability form to confirm your availability throughout the season. We use that information along with the risk-based landings, like high risk, medium, or low, very low. Your distance to and from the landing, uh, and then, of course, your availability. If anything changes, if you said, I'm available to work up to 40 hours a week, any day of the week, and let's say you get another part-time job that's Monday to Friday, let us know as soon as you can so that we don't schedule you those Monday to Fridays and we keep you on Saturday, Sunday only, something like that. Um, otherwise, we're going to use what you gave us. All the schedules, that, like I said, are only in the app or on that QuickBooks Time website and they'll be provided at least two weeks in advance. Uh, you'll be scheduled as close to home as possible unless you mentioned you have no preference in the interview. Uh, we just want you to be prepared to work at other landings. We're going to keep you as close to home. I keep saying that, uh, but if something comes up, if we have five inspectors call in or something happens, we might ask call you on Saturday morning and say, hey, we have Three landings on Cross Lake open. Can you please go up to Cross Lake? You're on this really low priority lake. Um, so just be prepared for that. We're hopeful that rarely happens, but it could. You're not guaranteed to be at one access all season long. Some people like, this is my landing. I know who lives here. I know who comes here. I want to stay here. We try. If you like that, we try really hard. As long as we have enough inspectors to cover the other landings, and we're fair to other people. We're not making people drive to the other side of the county just to give you that one landing. We will keep you there as much as we possibly can. Um, make sure you're checking QuickBooks often. You will be alerted if or when your schedule changes. So it doesn't mean you have to go in there every day because you will get an alert if we change something and you will get an alert when we publish your schedule. So you don't have to go in there every day, but just making sure you're checking it at least the day before you think you're scheduled. Uh, just to make sure you know where you're going as well, which landing you're at. Who's that guy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't tell he's got someone on his face. Uh, if your availability changes or varies, like I said, let us know right away. Um, if it changes drastically to like, I'm only available on Sundays now, you might not receive very many hours because it's hard to schedule one person on one day. You might just be a fill-in if people ask for time off. It's hard to 
fill just one day. Limited availability, continuous time off, unpredictable scheduling may result in having no shifts for periods at a time just because once we kind of get in a routine and people are comfortable where they're at, we know where people are going. If you start asking for every weekend off or every other Saturday or something crazy starts happening, it's really hard for us to schedule you, so it might just make you a, like the lowest priority for scheduling just because it's harder to find where you can go, things like that. Um, if you cannot make your scheduled hours, your scheduled shift, notify us immediately. If you're going to be late, let us know. Call that inspector hotline so that one of us answers or one of us will get the message. Um, excessive last minute changes will not be tolerated. So that is, if you're, if we put you on a few different landings in every land, you're like, I can't work this one, I can't work this one, I can't work this one, I can't work this one. That gets really tough for scheduling as well. Um, we'll work with you as much as possible. We know there's some really busy landings and we know there's some slower ones and we'll work with you to get you on those ones that you prefer busier or slower. We'll do our best that way. Um, but we also have, these are the landings we have to cover. This is part of the job. We need you to be as much available as possible. If you are gonna be out for more than three days and you are ill, if you're the person ill for three days, we do ask that you provide us with a doctor's note, just something like, yeah, they were really sick. It hasn't happened yet, but. Um, we already talked about time off requests. We expect consistent coverage throughout the season with 90% availability. I can't tell you that exact number. We just always say 90%, but we want you to be available as much as possible. But we do know it's the summer, it's weekends, things are going on. So we understand that as well. Uh, you may not exceed 40 hours each week. Uh, with the nine hour shifts, you're typically going to be at 36 hours each week if you work four shifts. We can't give you a half a shift or a fifth shift because then you're going to be over the 40 hours. Uh, no overtime is allowed without approval from us. Typically, we have no overtime. Last year, we did because we were short inspectors, so we did offer overtime over the 4th of July holiday. So it's pretty rare, but we're never going to just schedule you overtime and make you work it. We'll always reach out and say, does anyone want any overtime? We have a lot of shifts open. And then you can volunteer. The hours are generally weekends and holidays, some weekdays for lakes that have requested expanded coverage. Um, WAPOA is a very passionate lake association. Bay, Hubert, there's, I think we have 11 expanded coverage this year. Um, and that's going to be our Monday to Thursday <coughs> coverage on those lakes that we don't provide coverage on those days. Um, your work site is the landing or decontamination station that you are operating. So it's either going to be cross lake, the landing, and the mobile is going to be with you at the landing. When you're working the mobile decon, you will be doing inspections and decons at the same time. Um, if it gets busy, you just work through prioritizing which you're going to do. Uh, we kind of went through that in decon training. And if you haven't went through decon training, when you go through that, they'll talk about how do you prioritize? If I'm deconning a boat and a boat's coming in to enter the water, which, which is the most important? Um, your shift will begin and end at the work site. If you're not eligible for sick or holiday pay, since it is a seasonal position. Those of you that this is your first year, you will be paired up with the returning inspector for your first shift only. If for some reason after that first shift, because you're probably scheduled that next day at a landing by yourself, if for some reason at that first shift you're like, I am not ready to be by myself, let us know right away after that shift as soon as you can so that we can either pair you with someone the next day or take you off whatever landing you're at that next day and get you paired with someone as soon as we can. Um, this year we have more new people than returning. So we did not have enough to get all of you new inspectors paired with a returning inspector tomorrow. So some of you new inspectors are not working tomorrow and that's why we just did not have anyone to pair you with. Same with even potentially Sunday, just because of who we have for returners and what they're available and what landings we have open these first two weekends. You new inspectors might kind of have a odd schedule these first couple weeks, but we'll get you in there. We have you in the schedule, we just don't have anyone to pair you with. Um, when you are working with, uh, when you are a new inspector and a returning inspector and you're paired, both of you should bring your full gear because essentially they're going to train you at the landing again it's another training day for you you should bring your full gear your tablets uniform id flags everything only one of you though should be doing the actual serve the dnr survey the other inspector um, you can clock in or excuse me you can do the survey but make sure you do it under there's a training one in there 
make sure you do that training one if you're going to do it along with them so that there's not two surveys going to the DNR and they're getting duplicate data. Um, when you are the returning inspector, you're going to clock into the late access that you're at. And the new inspector, you're going to clock into double up training. So when you clock in and you select the job code, you're going to pick double up training. Because we also don't want, when we report the hours to lake associations, we send it out every two weeks. We don't want to show that there was 18 hours on a Saturday at one lake. On our app, I didn't see it mentioned if we, you, last year I know when I was new it said that I was training someone, but on here it doesn't say if we're training someone. Um, oh, yeah. So awesome. we just assume someone's going there tomorrow? Probably tomorrow <coughs> and Sunday is pretty safe to assume you'll have someone with you. So okay. just um, and next to know we're looking at someone, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> going to be there with me? Are they here yet? Because he could be another set of eyes for us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we can look at if we have time today adjusting that so you can see it too. Sure. Or um, just tell us. Yeah. Here, just if you know. But yeah, it's very helpful for you guys to know. Absolutely. Although you first need your hand up for a while. I was wondering about uh, clocking in. Um, so nine o'clock to six o'clock. Yep. If you become busy and you don't do it right at nine and it's after six or something when you check out, is that okay? Or is that? It is. Just let us that? know. Let us know. Be like, hey, I got to the landing. There's a line of boats. I walked up and I started inspecting, forgot to clock in. Let us know. Okay, you can that? put a note when you clock in. You can say, hey, I was here at nine, okay. but there's a line of boats. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Try your best to get clocked in. But right. yeah. Right. And then, yeah. If there's a line of boats at six, you're not required to stay. You can go ahead and leave, but I mean. Well, I mean, if you stay and finish what your job is at the time at yep. after six o'clock, you can clock in at six or out at six fifteen. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yep. Okay. It's not going to be paid for. Well, depending on how far it does round every fifteen well, minutes. Paid so. for nine hours. If you slip there in nine and a half hours, it's a, a drop. It's voluntary. <laughs> So what do you think? You don't get paid for those extra 15 minutes? No. It'll round the time. Yep. So if it if you work till 9.15, we might round it up. But if we notice you're like, okay, she's been working till 9, or excuse me, 6.30 every day, then we're going to talk to you and be like, okay, sure. you, you got to get out of there by 6. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. um, but yeah, here and there, it's fine. We're not expecting you to be like, there's a little bit of inspection. It's 6. I got to go. Um, state app that I work with as an actual edit where you can go in and edit your time to make sure you write accurate minutes. You know? Yeah, and you don't have to worry about that. We'll check all that if you really want to go ahead, but no, you can, but we don't teach you that. We're not expecting you to do that. We'll do that on our end before we submit it to payroll, and you'll see any edits we make too. Yes. During the training, it was talking about using a flashlight and then like for some of this stuff, rather than crawling under the boat, can you use like an inspection mirror and you guys aren't going to provide any of that? No. We don't give mirrors. I think they did quite a while back and they weren't really used that often. They'll go over a lot more of that in the DNR hands-on training this afternoon. Um, we do not give flashlights or mirrors out. You're welcome to get your own if you really want, but we don't provide them just because they weren't highly used. Yeah. You have flashlights on your phones too. Well, anyway. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then maybe you could reverse the image. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and take a picture. Anyway, um, can clarification on that. When you're okay. So I have a, somebody I'm training, and they're going to be in. Did you turn the screen? Because I'm having trouble following this. Um, they're they're logged in under double up training. Okay, so I I just I heard something in there and I wasn't sure if something changed. Um, I do the inspection on mine under the access and all of that. Mm -hmm. If they're inspecting, they're doing it under the training 1000. In the can they, they do the same, can they do the same one that I'm doing under that 1000? They can, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. If they, can they do it without being under the training? Will you get, if I don't do it on mine, can they do it on theirs? Yeah, also. Yep, that's a good question. Absolutely. If you're 
get there and you've done, it's a pretty busy day, you've done quite a few boats, and they're like, I think I got this, can I try it? Go ahead, just as long as both of you are not submitting under the actual lake. Yep, they certainly okay. can, the new inspector. I just want clarification. As soon as they're comfortable, let them, yep. Okay. Yeah. If we have training, if, if we're training somebody, will it be on the same schedule as we are? Yeah. So, yeah. so I should be able to see somebody if I'm. Yep, yep. We'll, we'll try to get that fixed before tomorrow, but we might not. But just assume there's someone there with you tomorrow and probably Sunday. And it's not going to be the same person. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, new inspectors, let us know right away if that one day you're like, yeah, I'm just not quite comfortable. I feel like I need another day. Let us know right away after your first shift on Saturday or whatever your first shift is. Let us know. So we don't know if we're really going to train, if we have somebody to train right away or not? Um, we're going to try to fix it in the schedule so you see it. I think it's just the way we entered the schedule so you don't see both names. because we I think we did it as two separate instead of one. But you're safe to assume, yes, you are training. If you're a returning inspector, you are training people okay. this weekend. Um, if your tablet stops working unexpectedly, let Janiel or Steve know right away. Um, sometimes myself, call that 1104 number um, and we will get you a backup tablet as soon as we can. Um, in the meantime, if you have a lot of boats, it depends on how comfortable you are with the survey, but you know what the survey is asking you. Jot it down on a piece of paper and we can get those surveys uploaded later. Um, Attempt to charge the tablet with your car charger because that's the landing. That's what you're going to use. So like I said, there's a few bags that don't have car chargers in them. So if you don't have one, let us know and when they come in, we'll let you know or we'll get it to you. Um, like I said, in the meantime, continue to inspect those watercraft, fill out the survey, just jot down notes on your a piece of paper as best you can. Yeah. Uh, just a reminder to keep your tablet out of the sun. Oh, yes, good. That will kill your battery for one. It could kill the tablet in general and it won't work at all. Do the best you can to keep it out of the sun. Yes, thank you. And obviously, like, they're not meant to be, like, dipped in water or anything. But right. But how water resistant are they? Like, if they get wet at all, it, it, should that be, like, a reason for panic or something? Or? Like, if it starts sprinkling, it's not going to hurt them. But I've worked in pouring down yeah. rain. They keep working. Uh, they're pretty protected. They wipe it off constantly. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty waterproof with all the cases and coverings we have on them. But yeah, don't throw it in the lake when you get mad at the motor or something. And it's probably not going to work. Someone over here request a break. Um, make sure you select the correct boat access when you're in the survey. Um, always refer to the WIP number first. With There is a list in your book of the WIP number, but you'll get used to it. They also show up. It's a drop down when you're selecting it. It's just sometimes a lot to scroll through. I think you can start typing the number and it starts narrowing it down. Uh, so that's helpful too. Uh, like I said, they're in pages 12 to 16 in your manual. Again, that manual, we have paper copies and it's also downloaded to your tablet. Uh, just as a heads up on this WIP number, why it's important, there's at least eight round lakes in Minnesota that are on that survey. So you always want to make sure you're selecting the one that's in Crowing County and it's always going to start with an 18 or a 1-8. Um, the only exception is Goal East starts with an 11 and Mille Lacs here and starts with a 48 just because part of the lake is in county. <coughs> Um, first time trainee inspectors can use the 1000 training number in the WIP box, like we just talked about. The addresses, like I mentioned before too, they can be found on pages 12 to 16 in your manual. It's the same spreadsheet that shows the address, the WIP number, a bunch of information. Also, a list of currently infested lakes in Crowin County is found on pages 60 to 63. This is continually updated by the DNR. They said yesterday they updated about every month, month and a half. So that list is current as of when we printed it. And we also let you know is if we find out there's a lake in Crowing County or one in the surrounding area with Starry Stonework, because that's a big one we're watching for, we let you know right away. You're going to get weekly updates from us in your email about what's going on, anything important happening. We're going to let you know if there's a new lake invested as well in Crowing County. Um, those Manuals, like I was talking about, on your iPad, there's an icon, should have put a screenshot, and it says files. 
that's where you're going to find the DNR inspection manual, the DNR decontamination manual, which I know you're not all doing decon, but it's there for you, and then our Crow and County manual. Um, we can walk around later too, and if you're not finding that file, maybe you don't care because you're not going to use it, but it's on there. Um, our pay policy, our pay periods are two weeks long. They start on Saturday and end on Friday. That's why we need you to submit your time on Friday. So today is the end of a pay period. We have to sign our time cards today at the county. You guys have to submit your time. Tomorrow is the first day of a new pay period. They're two weeks long. So it's going to go from this Saturday till next Friday, two Fridays from now. Um, but you still submit your time cards every Friday so we can go in and review that so we're not trying to do two weeks at a time. Uh, you'll be able to view all your paychecks in employee self-service. Uh, we'll send you a, um, a helpful thing on that. There is one in your manual as well. That's how we view our paychecks as well. We don't get a paper copy. We don't get an email. Your first check for your new inspectors is going to be mailed to you. Or if you're a returning inspector and you changed your bank account, your check is going to be mailed to you, your first one. And then after that, it will be direct deposit. Um, so yeah, so as far as paper pay stubs, you're not getting those. You're going to go into ESS if you want to look at your pay stubs. Um, if you have any like pay related questions, I would still reach out to me or Janiel first because we can probably answer it. But depending on how in depth it is, we might transfer you to our payroll department. But typically it's going to be us if you're asking about hours or things like that. We're going to know before she is. Uh, this just kind of shows our pay periods. Like I said, tomorrow is the first day of a pay period, and it runs through the 26th. This calendar is also on page 30 of your manual, so you can kind of see, okay, here's my two-week pay period, and you're going to get paid for that time on June 2nd. So the two-week pay period, and you're paid the following Friday. So your time from today, you'll get paid for next Friday. Really big paycheck for you. One day. Well, and your training time for your DNR online training. <laughs> Um, I already went over almost all of this. Um, ESS, just to expand on what employee self-service is, it's an online program where you view your paychecks. Your W-2s are also viewable on there, and you have access to this once you're in forever. Um, so you can go on there and view past year's W-2s, the current years once it's available. Um, they'll also mail your W-2s. There's an option in there to check. If you only want to get it this way, then you won't get one mailed. Um, but typically, you'll get your W-2 mailed to you. And you can update your direct deposit or withholding information in there as well. So if you change banks throughout the season, you can go in there and change that. Or if you want to change your withholding, if you're at zero now and you went up to four or whatever, you can do that all within there. And just reach out to us if you have any questions. Uh, those instructions I talked about on how to log into the ESS website is on pages 26 to 29 in your manual. You will need your employee number to log in. Uh, we'll be sending an email, all we typically do every year, with a list of your employee number because most of you don't know that. It's not a number you're going to use for anything but this. Um, so we'll send you that. So when you first log into ESS, it'll be that employee number and the last four of your social. Those of you that are returning inspectors that have been in there before, it's going to be whatever password you set up. It's still going to be your four employee number, or your four digit employee number, but whatever password you changed it to. Let us know if you're locked out. We can reset that for you too. Here is ESS, the login. So this is just a snapshot of the screen. I'll do a, a laser on here. So this is the top right corner. Once you uh, go to the website, in the top right corner, you're going to click that little arrow. It's going to bring you to this login screen. And then you're going to log in. And once you're in the screen, it's a lot bigger than this. There's more, but towards the middle of this, you'll see your paychecks. And you can click on details. It'll just bring you like a screen of it. You can click on the camera. It'll show you a picture of your pay stub. All right, time for another quiz. Everyone can jump right into it, right? It'll pop right up for you. What's the coding? Raise your hand again if you're having any issues so we know if we can come help. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, I get the low C and Drew. <laughs> So now you'll push the home button. Yep. Yep. Yeah, there. Yep, right at that little circle at the bottom. And you'll put that secret code in there. There you go. Now you're going to have to go. Um, yeah, you actually just click this other tab right here. There you are. Training code number two. To get to what? Can you get five quizzes? Oh, you can see it. 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 Oh, you can see is everyone yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yep. So when that pop up comes up, just hit proceed to sign. It's just telling me what you're doing. Feel free to use the restroom or walk around here while we do this. We'll take about just a couple minutes so we can get you out of here by noon. And then apply through these restaurants the rest of the day. I'm great. How are you? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to keep moving so I can get you guys out of here by noon. Everyone that has submitted so far, I don't think I saw more than a couple wrong answers. So, I should not honor. It must not be too hard to stuff. I'm not talking too fast. Um, all right, appropriate uniform policy. Uh, this is mandatory stuff and provided by us for you. The inspector safety vest. You must wear that at all times, and it has to be on the outside of your clothing. So if it's kind of chilly, rainy, you're wearing a coat, put that vest on over that coat. It needs to be on the outside. If we pull up to the landing, and our, when it, like when we're doing our rounds, checking on you, making sure everything's going good, um, we're going to look for that. We're going to look for that vest to be on. Um, for one, it helps identify you. For two, it's safety reasons for voters to see you. If you are going to wear a hat, we need you to wear one of our Crow Wing County hats. We have them on the back table back there. We have baseball hats and we have floppy hats. Um, so, uh, trying to think of what else. I think that should be it. Uh, mandatory uh, uniform, I guess you could call it, and what's provided by you. The pants or shorts that you're wearing, making sure that they're in decent condition. Um, if you're wearing shorts, try not to wear, you know, like the Daisy Duke shorts. I know John really likes those. <laughs> what, what do I like? Sure, sure. Oh, yeah. See if you're paying attention. Um, plain crew neck, short sleeve or long sleeve shirts, no sleeveless shirts, like with the sleeves ripped off, tank tops, no offensive slogans. If it's a 
brand or whatever, that's fine. Your vest is going to cover most of it, but nothing loud and obnoxious. Uh, make sure you're wearing closed toed or heeled shoes. Um, absolutely, when you're working decon at the landing, um, you can wear Crocs. I know those are super popular. That's closed toed. Those are acceptable. They're also, you know, a little cooler to wear when you're out at the landing, so it's warm up. Sunglasses, absolutely wear them. It's really bright out there most days, and you're staring at really beautiful water most of the day. Uh, but if you are wearing them, make sure you take them off when you're speaking with those boaters. And then just appropriate seasonal outerwear. Wear a coat if you're chilly. Wear a distress for the weather. Uh, vehicle policy. No sitting in your vehicle except for during extreme weather or raining events. Um, if it's raining, go ahead and sit in your vehicle. Just make sure your vehicle is parked somewhere out of the way, but also where you can see the landing or a boat coming in. Because um, people will still go into the, they'll still go boating, they'll still fish and do other things if it's raining. Um, but feel free to sit in your vehicle if it's raining so you're not getting so. Uh, don't park your vehicle in an unauthorized area like handicap, sheriff spots. We don't have a ton of sheriff spots. Um, or blocking the landing. Park your vehicle out of the way of traffic and not in a parking spot if at all possible. Some landings, that's where you're going to have to park is in a parking spot, but get it out of the way. Um, <coughs> any damage to your personal vehicle is your responsibility. So that's another reason why I get it out of the way of the boaters. Don't have it in the path where they're trying to pull their boats in. In case of a car accident during work hours, whether it's yourself or you see one there, make sure you contact the local police or county sheriff department. If there was an accident, they're already calling the police department. You don't have to, um, but be willing to help them out if, if they ask. Or if it's your own vehicle, obviously you're going to call. <coughs> if your vehicle breaks down and will affect your work schedule, contact us immediately. Another one of those. Just let us know right away as soon as you can. Equipment policy, that's why we have you sign that equipment checkout sheet. So make sure you leave that, your emergency contact form, and that survey that you're going to fill out for us. Make sure you leave all of them either where, that'd be the best, just leave them where you're sitting and we'll come grab them. So you don't have to worry about dragging them all over. Um, all equipment is property of Crowing County and can only be used for work-related purposes. This includes the iPad, tablet, vest, slate, grabber tool, etc. I know you'll probably want to wear your vest to the local watering hole on Friday night, but just try to that home. Um, and then you are required to sign that equipment agreement. So if at the end of the season or whenever you're finished with your position, if we don't get that iPad since it's the most expensive thing back, um, we will bill you for that. And those amounts are shown on that equipment checkout sheet. Um, we know the flags get wear and tear. We know the vests and the hats and things like that. Some of that, the hats we let you keep. Um, you know, it's kind of gross to bring back a hat and put it on someone else's head. Uh, the vests we do take back every year. We wash, we throw some away. We know there's wear and tear on things, so we're not looking for that when we bring it back. We understand that. Um, but we do require most everything else come back. The tablet, the flag, the grabber, your chargers. Any of the handouts, that beautiful green bag, the hat, you get to keep if you want it. Um, you're expected to turn in your equipment by the Monday following your last day of work. So if you're left, whether it, you're quitting or I'm done for the season, I'm going back to school or teaching or whatever it might be. So if your last shift is on a Friday, get that back into us by Monday. If you can't, let us know, work something out with us so we know when you're coming in to drop that off. If you don't turn it in on time or make other arrangements, your last paycheck will be withheld until the equipment is returned. Uh, the tablets are only for watercraft inspection duties, which includes the survey and any files we have uploaded, which are your manuals. Um, you can't use it. It doesn't have internet access unless you connect it to Wi-Fi, which is how you're going to upload your survey. Um, so you can't use it for any other purpose really anyways, but make sure you're only using it for work uses. The internet may be utilized only for work-related duties, which, like I said, doesn't have internet, but if you're at the landing and you have a hotspot on your phone and you want to connect it to look something up for a boater, you can. That'll work. Uh, no app may be downloaded. It's not going to let you anyway. The tablets are Wi-Fi only, and you must connect them to Wi-Fi at least once per week to upload that DNR survey. Um, if there is an AI violation, you must upload the survey within 24 hours. That's the only exception. Otherwise, at least once per week. You can do it every night. You can do it however often you want, but at least once per week, unless there's a violation, that within 24 hours. And then you have to fill out that violation form as well and get that to us. 
Never assume the survey will auto upload once the tablet is in a Wi-Fi range or zone. It needs to be physically uploaded. You have to go into it, click it, upload. Then it will take them all. It's usually pretty quick. There is more instructions in your manual on page 36 on this, and the DNR goes over the survey for in their training. <sighs> Mobile phones are to be turned on at all times during work hours for QuickBook time tracking. That doesn't mean you have to like sit there and have the screen on all day, but it needs to be on and working. So if we need to call you or anything like that, but you need to leave it on so that it keeps tracking your time. If you shut your phone off, it'll stop tracking you. For QuickBooks time, you need to go to your location settings and turn on always during work hours. It asks you that when you first logged into it, so you should be set. Um, we'll let you know if we see you're clocked in and we can't see your location. We'll reach out to you. Personal cell, text, and or internet usage should be of limited frequency and duration. So if you have a smartphone and you're at the access or even just a regular cell phone, try not to be on it all day. Um, make sure you get off it if a voter comes in. Don't make a voter wait for you to finish reading your Facebook post or whatever it might be. Um, obviously, you're not allowed to be on your phone during the interaction with the voters. Make sure you're putting the phone away or whatever it might be. Weather events. You're going to work in all types of weather, hot, cold, rain, probably not snow, but you never know. <laughs> um, the only time it's acceptable to sit in your car between inspections is when it's raining or if you're on a break. Go ahead and sit there for your 15 minutes break to cool off if it's hot or on your lunch. Um, you are allowed to leave the landing. I think this comes up later. If there is no bathroom, you're allowed to leave the landing and go to a gas station or whatever might be closest, wherever you feel most comfortable. Just let us know when you leave. So if we show up there or conservation officer or something shows up there and you're like, I thought you had a person here. Where are they? We can say, hey, they ran to the bathroom. At least we have an answer for them. Um, we're going to keep you informed of hazardous weather via text messages or email. Probably text message because it's quicker is what we're going to try to do. If we know um, there's going to be bad thunderstorms all day, like very bad, not just rain, we might call off your shift for the day just because you're just going to be sitting in your car all day and no one's going to be going in the water. Uh, or if you're out there and something comes in in the afternoon, you know, reach out to us if you don't feel comfortable and we haven't already let you know, reach out to us and be like, I don't feel safe out here, I need to go. Just so we know that you're leaving and why. Uh, you may go to the nearest shelter in a storm, use your best judgment when deciding to return. Um, contact us if you do leave, let's say we think this is going to pass in 10 minutes. We ask that you not like go home for the day, go somewhere close. It all depends on the person. Some people hate storms, some people don't care. So it kind of depends on the person. Just keep us, uh, communicate with us so we know what your plan is and we will do the same. Do not leave the landing if it's just raining or not a warning for immediate hazardous weather. Like I said, we do work in the rain. Uh, just sit in your car or you can sit out in the rain if you want, if you have the right gear or just want to sit out there. Uh, you will not be compensated for leaving the landing during a shift. You are compensated for time on the landing. So if you do leave for the afternoon because it's raining and you don't come back to the landing or because there is a bad storm, you're not going to get paid for that time that you left. If you leave to go use the bathroom, if you leave to run down the road and get a sandwich for lunch and come back, you're, you are paid for that time. That's different. It's, if you, I'm done for the day, I'm not coming back because there's bad weather, you're not going to get paid for that time. You're allowed a half hour compensated meal break at the access and two 15 minute breaks. They're not written into your schedule. Take them as you can. Um, don't, oh, it's 11 o'clock when you're in the middle of an inspection and go to lunch. Um, try to time it good. Um, we do ask uh, if you are on your lunch and you're just sitting there eating and they can obviously see you're sitting there working, you have to inspect them and then just add that time to your lunch break. Don't ignore them while you're sitting there eating your sandwich. Because um, they will call us depending on who it is. Like, your inspector just sat there, didn't do anything. Um, we recommend that you bring lunch with you just because there's usually not somewhere decently close at some of these landings to go get food. Anytime you leave the access, you must let us know, like I said, just so we can tell people if they ask, why is there no one here? And again, do not clock out to use the bathroom, even if it's at a gas station or someone away, somewhere away from the land, landing. Excuse me. You don't need to clock out to do that. Yeah. Personal experience, if you're eating lunch and a boat comes in, you get up to do the inspection, don't leave your sandwich on your chair if they've got a dog. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> your lunch is done. 
So how do you want us? I mean, this is silly, but how do you want us? We have to go to the bathroom. Do I text you? Do you want me to email you? I mean, what, um, it what depends the on the person. You can call that 11 uh, 1104 phone number that we gave you that rings on all our phones. That okay. works. You want us, you want us to do that every day for a day? <laughs> That's a lot of calls to you. Guys. It could be, depending on the landing. Um, there is some, once they get comfortable, they know uh, Janiel and whoever has, well, we'll have two cell phones out there all the time. You can text those numbers. Um, also, some people, once they get used to QuickTime, they just put a note in QuickTime because you can go into your time card and type a note and then it submits to us. So some people do that. Whatever works best whatever for you. Just, yeah, just so we know. I would say probably not email because it doesn't usually alert us, so we're not going to see it right away. I'm just turning it through you this out. All right, thanks. Yep. Uh, if you end up getting hurt at the access during your shift, you need to contact us immediately. There's a couple forms we have to fill out, and one of them is like we need to get that in immediately in case it is a work comp thing because if we go past a certain deadline, everything could be denied. Um, it's our first report of injury and our accident investigation form. I don't think we got those in your manuals because I just forgot about them, so I'm reading about them now. Um, so we'll get them out to you when we're doing our rounds within one of these first two weekends, and we have plenty here. So as long as you call us right away and let us know, we can get that filled out. Just some need your signature on them. The first report of injury is the one we need right away, so we can get that turned into work comp just in case. Um, and then the accident investigation needs to be returned within three days. So if you do get hurt, let us know, and we'll be contacting you to get these forms filled out in one way or another. You and us need to sign both of these forms, and they are not located in the back pocket of your manual. We'll get them to you. Uh, press and media. If the press approaches you, you may talk about what you do. If you do not wish to speak to them, refer them to us. Like I said, just keep it high level. This is what I do. I'm here. I'm inspecting boats. If they're really digging into our program for anything, send them our way. Um, to leave the watercraft inspection in good standing, Two weeks notice is expected. Give us as much head up, heads up as possible. Um, I know a lot of you have already given us end dates on your availability. If you can't work till the end of the season, if you can only work to a certain date, so we know that's your end date, that's good standing. We know when you're done. You're not allowed to accept money or gifts at the access. If you're offered money, thank them, but explain it's against policy to accept. I do know some inspectors, they get to know people if they're at the landing lot. They'll bring you cookies, they'll bring you snacks. I don't think we have a policy against cookie or snack. So. How about free fish? Well, I would take that if I were you, but <laughs> <laughs> just don't take money. We don't talk about that. <laughs> um, everything you say and do will be judged by the public. Um, Lake Association's general public, they do watch our program closely, uh, especially Lake Association. They're very passionate around here, so they will randomly come around. Oh, nice to meet you if they don't already know you. Um, they're not bad people, they're just very passionate about their lakes and passionate that we get our inspectors out there. Uh, conduct at the landing, smoking is prohibited. You can do it on your lunch breaks um, or breaks only when boaters are not around. Do not sit there in your chair right by the dock smoking your cigarette. Headphones for listening to music are not allowed during work hours. It's fine if you're watching like a video on your phone to have the volume on, but make sure you're shutting that off if there's boaters there. Friends, relatives, and pets may not accompany, me, accompany you at the landing for any reason. Um, they can, like if you are close to your home and your spouse or whoever wants to bring you a sandwich for lunch, that's fine. But they can't sit there and you can't have your dog sitting there and your cat sitting there. Can't do that. No sleeping or napping. I know some, some of these landings can get kind of slow and you don't fall asleep. Bring something with to occupy you. Go for a little walk around the landing. You can't swim, you can't fish. Uh, no arriving under the influence of any controlled substance. No lounging appearance. Your chair should be in an upright position, so we don't want them to pull in and see you just like sunbathing there. Um, make it look like you're awake and excited to inspect their boat. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all of these. This is our discipline policy, so it kind of goes through the first, second, third warning offense. First warnings, you're gonna get our first warning offense says you're gonna get a verbal warning and an incident report email. Three or more of those could result in suspension. They include being late, um, often for attitude, profanity, any violations of our county or DNR policy, um, any unauthorized leave, not wearing uniforms, and there's a few others, but it's all in your manual. Second warning includes everything in the first warning except 
two of these will result in a suspension or removal. Um, excessive ab absenteeism of accumulating 20 or more hours of leave in one pay period. Um, so that's about two days. Any threats or abuse to us or the general public. Any unsafe actions we see resulting in injury or damaged equipment. And there's a few others. Final warning, these may result in immediate termination. Serious acts of aggression. If you're really mad at that voter and you start getting in a fight with them and you're punching them, you're probably done. Um, any violations of federal laws, stealing, vandalism, uh, falsifying timesheet information. And again, like I said, you can't sit or swim, girl, at the landing. It's very tempting while you're sitting there, but you cannot. Well, so obviously we can't have the recreation sergeant there. If that's the... <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> All right, quiz number three. Go for it. We're going to fly here. I'll talk really fast. I'm not talking fast. I'm so one of us will be outside, one of us will be in here. Yeah. Um, and so we'll just run through kind of how for the survey for that part. Um, okay. Just because we couldn't really. Yeah. Like, I even tried using my phone, yeah. like like hotspot, to one of the devices, and it, and it says it's fine to it. So I couldn't do anything. So I was like, I found like one of the devices actually didn't have it. I'm like, is that the one that I for? So we'll see okay. if, if we'll have to, yeah, we'll just have to, okay. so before they leave here today, we'll just make sure that everybody's got a survey on it. Yeah, I know before a they that I walk out when they open their sample, they're like, I'm like, ah, you know, trying to get to this place that we're doing now, and it yeah. popped up on the DNR thing, and it was spinning, 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 I think they were paid on the Yeah, so none of the ones. Uh, I was, there was like three of them that you had them. Otherwise, everybody else should have it. So we'll just, so we'll just take a little bit of your time okay. to run through the survey with the group that was outside okay. at the, the morning session. And then hopefully, everybody here that will have to be outside for the afternoon session will have it. <laughs> we'll just make sure. Yeah. I, I verified on the website that they're all assigned, so they all have it. It's yeah, for some reason it's definitely just yeah. You can sit in your car. We're still going to have you at the landing. Um, Dad, I would say sit in your car, but then. Yeah, yep. Yep. That's fine. over and it actually got really cool. We were afraid it was going to rain on us. We're like, Austin, I asked the uh, deputy who came and spoke this morning because we stopped doing it. I said, it, uh, we have to. Can we pull the boat in your garage over there? He's like, yep, it should be empty. I think there's one boat in there. There should be enough for us to pull up. So that's good. I'm like, I have a car. Um, like, no, she has something to go to the garage. So if she does come, we're good. Oh, you think, Neil? Wasn't this supposed to rain? We'll call you, Neil, in the last minute. Get out of here. It's pouring out. Get out of here. It's pouring out. I'm sitting in my car. All your inspectors are in their cars. And they're waving at us. <laughs> all right, I know not all of you are done. Go ahead and finish completing it as much as you want here. Um, well, I yeah, ask, please complete it so you kind of know because it's going to tell you if you get it right or wrong, but kind of listen to me in the background just so we can get you out of here in time. 
Um, I went through, I, there was only like two wrong answers, so you guys are catching on, you got it. Pretty common sense, some of this. Um, partnerships are key for our program. The Minnesota DNR, the general public, our county, like we all work together on this AIS prevention. Um, Parting with the DNR at the access policy. You may arrive to a landing and encounter a DNR watercraft inspector. Um, we usually know where they're located and they know where we're at on the weekends. So typically that is not necessarily planned, but we want you both to work that landing. Um, for one, it's to learn from them, learn things that they know that you might not, ask them questions, learn from them, help them, assist them, work with them respectfully. Uh, they will operate the decon station. Typically, they're, or do they always have the decon? Uh, it's not always, yeah. but okay. a lot of them. Generally, if you're pairing with us, yes, we will. Okay. Um, so they will operate the decon station. Go ahead and like watch them learn if you want, but you are not operating the decon. They are. Um, so you will perform the inspection. So those are instances where if you're at the landing and they're doing a decon, you can walk away because you're watching them and you can go do the boat inspection. Um, assist them with setting up and taking down the decon station mat upon their request. If they don't ask you to, if they look like they're struggling and you want to help, please go help them. Or two, but if they ask, please go help them. Um, learn from them, ask them questions, be respectful, be courteous. Um, do not directly engage with policy criteria. Don't be like, how much do you make? What kind of breaks do you get? What do you get? This, that. Um, I don't think they really do that. You never know everyone's tax, but their policies are different than ours. They have different pay. They have different protocols. They get paid differently. And I don't think they get paid for their lunch break. And you guys do, but they get paid drive time, something like that. There's a little bit different policy. Yeah, it's, we work 10 hour shifts and our, yeah. our time is our, our time off is actually built into our 10 hour shift. So yes. yeah, so it's just a little different. So you can't compare everything. Um, if you are to work at Army Corps of Engineers Landing, which is the only one we have in Crow Wing County that we staff is the one in Cross Lake at the campground. So if you are working there, there is a volunteer service agreement. Um, is there anyone scheduled there tomorrow? Probably. Does anyone know that they're scheduled at the campground tomorrow? They might be in the other tree. Oh. Well, no, there should be someone in here. You also have to fill it out if you're at Big Trout and at Climbing Show. Oh, do you? Yes. Oh, good to know. Thank you. I did not know that. I'm still learning some of this myself. Uh, so this is in your manual. So we need to find out for sure who has it, just in case you did not take a paper manual. You will need to fill out these forms. They're on page 67 in the manual. You'll turn that in to the office when you get there. Um, I think they're there by like 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, so there should be someone there that you can turn it into. Uh, park in designated areas only, not on the grass. In case of severe weather at Cross Lake, the shower buildings are the sturdiest facilities. If you don't want to get in your car and drive away, you can um, go into their shower building. Uh, obey any directions from the park ranger staff when you're there. It's their landing, they own it, they're very particular. Follow their uh, direction. Uh, report any vandalism or urgent maintenance issues. If you have questions, please contact the Cross Lake office at that number that's covered up there. Um, I'm pretty sure it's 218 though. Uh, this is all in your manual as well. So that number is on there, it's on the agreement form. Figure out who's working there. So you look yes. up. Yes. Uh, Rick Paulson and Nancy working on Nancy's working on Friday. The 19th. Oh, the 19th. Is there anyone there tomorrow? No. Oh, no one's at the campground tomorrow. Okay. Um. Daily procedure checklist. So at the start of your shift, you're going to park your car out of the way, not parking in a spot at the access. Try to park it as much out of the way as possible. You're going to clock in with your location setting to always on. You're going to make sure you select the correct lake access when you're clocking in. Like I said, if you go to that schedule tab, it pulls all that in for you. Flag, put the AIS awareness flag in a visible location for entering traffic. This is where you're going to establish your inspection point. For example, like setting your chair up if you bring a chair. Um, you probably want to bring a chair. Um, but this is going to let them know, hey, I'm here, I'm inspecting you, here's my flag, I'm on duty. Turn the iPad on and make sure that the DNR survey is loaded and ready to perform an inspection. And then make sure you identify the correct lake or landing in the DNR survey. Need to make sure we're always doing that correct landing. We're going to be checking that data and we can correct it on the back end. If Anita's at Mille Lacs on Saturday and all our surveys are under 
It's a goal. Okay, what the heck? You're too clocked in or you were using the wrong one. We're going to switch it. We can switch it at our end, but it's much easier if you just select the right one. Um, end of shift. Oh, checklist during to end of shift. Verbally greet access users and complete the watercraft inspection. Um, so when they walk up, you're going to say, good morning, good afternoon, hello, I am Anita, I'm here, to, I'm the watercraft inspector. I'm going to do the survey and inspect your watercraft. If they become hostile, disengage. If you feel unsafe, leave the access and call the sheriff. Um, return once you feel safe. Obviously, this is all situational. It all depends on the situation. Let us know what's going on. Um, but we don't expect you if they're hostile. We don't expect you to sit there and battle with them and let them go. Do what you can. Let us know. Let the conservation officer, whatever it might be, sheriff's office. Once your shift is over, retrieve your equipment and take down your flag. Lock out of QuickBooks and make sure the tablet is shut off. And make sure you plug that in every night if possible or after every shift. You have to do it every night um, to make sure it's charged for the next day. Make sure you connect it to Wi-Fi once a week at minimum to upload those surveys. Unless there is a violation, you're uploading that immediately if possible, as soon as you possibly can, but for sure within 24 hours. Otherwise, there's nothing we can do about that violation or the DNR can do about that violation. Arriving at the access, we ask you arrive at least 10 minutes early if you can. Um, you want to get there at least a couple minutes early if at all possible to set up your flag, everything else, parking your vehicle, installing that so it's visible to arriving watercraft. Put your vest on outside of all your clothing. Make sure it stays on during your whole shift. Make sure you have your tablet turned on and ready to perform inspections. Do not press the start button on the survey until a voter enters the access. There's that guy again. <laughs> He's pretty popular. Uh, Didn't they fire him? Uh, <laughs> Didn't they fire him? <laughs> I don't know. Is he getting royalties for this? He just tried to man. Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, do not clock in until your shift starts, even if you are early. Um, if you pull in and you're really early, you get there at 8 o'clock for some reason. Maybe it's your first day you're trying to find the landing. Don't clock in at 8. Um, wait till that 9 o'clock. Uh, do not clock out until your shift ends. Um, I mean, unless you really don't want to get paid, go ahead and clock out, I guess. Uh, you will not be compensated for arriving early. Like I said, if you're there at 8, we're not going to pay you starting at 8 just because you got there at 8. And you're not allowed to leave late if you arrive late. So if you something happened and you didn't get there till 9.30, whatever it was, that doesn't mean you get to stay till 6.30 to get your 9 hours and you're still done at 6. Um, where do you park? This isn't the best picture. I was going to try to get a new one. I ran out of time. So where do you park in this situation? I think this is, I'm not even sure where this is. Um, it's so so if you got there, would you park, say, right here so you're nice and close? No, you're not going to park there. You're not going to park in any of those parking spots. You're going to pull, I don't know about landing anymore, what it exactly looks like, but you pull up probably into the trees. You can park a little bit on the grass depending upon the landing. So you want your car out of the way of the flow of traffic, so you need to know, okay, how are they pulling in, and they're going to pull up, back their boat in. How are they getting out of there? I don't want my car in the way. Yeah. Um, I was on Southwest for a few years, yep. and they had us going, putting the, put your vehicle, that center post where they have the sign, so people, when they're there, you can put your, your vehicle right on that, that center island thing. Okay. Yep. And yeah. Then, and then, yes, I was just going to say they're good at letting you okay, okay, to be done. Yep. I know there's a few landings where there's it's tough finding places to park. When we pull in, we'll try to help you out. If we're like, yeah, maybe you shouldn't have it there, we'll kind of let you know. Um, the sh not necessarily a sheriff deputy, but a local police officer might be like, hey, please don't park here. Can you move it here? So I'll kind of help you out too if you're not real sure. Just do the best you can, and someone will let you know if there's an issue with where you're parked. Um, where do you put your flag? Um, you're not going to put it out here by the road, depending on the access, of course. Let's say you're checking right here at the beginning. I can't touch my up there. Um, but wherever you're going to put your chair, you're going to put your flag down there so they know, they can see the flag, they know you're there. Um, and if your chair is like out of the way of trying to be in the shade, get your flag up there right by the landing so they can see it, but not in their way. Um, when you're performing the inspection, you're going to greet them. Hello, my name is Jessica. I'm a watercraft inspector for Crowing County. Can I please inspect your watercraft? It should only take a few minutes. Um, just be very friendly. You don't have to use that exact verbatim, but something really close to that. 
Um, start the DNR inspection survey and follow the prompts until the survey is completed. You will, you will be performing inspection surveys on entering and exiting watercrafts. This includes the Minnesota DNR Water Patrol Lake Service Providers. Uh, check the drain plug to make sure it's out during travel. It's against the law to travel with the drain plug in the boat, so you want to check that at all times. If a boater has their drain plug in when entering the access, educate them on the drain plug law and feel the drain plug to see if it's dry. If it is wet, help them dry their drain plug. Jessica, can I ask a real quick question? Uh, you know, like the lake service providers, they're supposed to have a uh, thing on the windshield. I get probably 50% don't. don't. And they just say, where am I? I'm a lake service provider. I just let them go, but they don't have that sticker. Yeah. So I'm not sure, you know, I'm, you know, it's that one of those, you know, you don't want to push the, but they say they are, yeah. you know, that's kind of what uh, something we should do. Or should they have it? Do you have a problem? Do you report that? Do you not? I mean, an email to the business to put your sticker on the truck, you know. Yep, and I think that sticker comes once they get certified at the DNR. Is that right. correct? Yeah, so Maybe the stickers not. are free. Oh, okay. So there's no reason why they shouldn't have enough. They could, if they only have 10 trucks, they could ask for 20 of them. Yeah. We don't care. Um, so there's no reason for them to not have that sticker. So, so if, you have the, a, if you have a lake service provider and they say, I am a lake service provider, right. ask them for their paper permit. If you don't see that sticker in the window, if you see that sticker, it's fine, right? right. But it, yeah, if they don't have that sticker and they say they're a lake service provider, ask them for their paper permit. If they do not have their paper permit, ask them for their little employee training card. If they do not have that, they are in violation. They can be fined for each one of those three things that they are missing. So if they do not have each one of those, they can be fined. How much? I don't know exactly what the fine is, but they, they can be fined for every single one of those things if they don't have them. Yeah, I don't want you know, it's one of those things you, you don't want to push, you don't want to. No, but, but, but they, they, they really need to be following the laws. They've been doing this for 12 plus years and they've been violating left and right. And if they're, they're not, they need to be following the laws. That, that permit, so like if they didn't have that stuff and they towed a watercraft away, and they get stopped by a conservation officer or by a local law enforcement, and they they say, well, I'm a lake service provider, right. and they don't have their permits with them, they're going to be fined, and they're going to be fined majorly, right? So That's a good question. Yeah. yeah, so I would ask them, if you don't see that sticker, ask them for their paper permit, because they have to have that with them. When they are working, they have to have it with them. Okay. So we're going to see a lot of in the week or two. What? We cannot deny the launch on that, though. You can deny launch if they're violating the laws. Really? If Well, so, like, if they if there's prohibited invasive species on the watercraft. Oh, right. But and the survey, yeah. That permit, but no, on the permit itself, no. You can't you can't deny them launching. If, mm -hmm. if they're following all the laws, they can launch. Okay. But if they're doing it for business, then I would totally, I would, I would, Try to figure out what's going on and I would email them and say, hey, Just try to get this person, compliance. this person is is operating without because they have to have that permit in order to operate in Minnesota. I think I've given them a DNR card in the past to say, here, please contact these people. Yeah. You need to get your stuff done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a phone number too that a gal in St. Paul yes. handles those. Yep. And she she'll handle them all. She'll call them and say, hey. We got a report that you don't have stickers and you guys are not carrying the car. Yep. Yep. She'll take care of it all. Yep. And maybe that, Jessica, you want to get that number. Because I would say out of the lake shore providers, half of them don't have stickers in the trucks. That many. They're one of our biggest from you guys as inspectors. It is for we us. We hear the most about. And it's not just Crowing County, it's everyone. Yeah, no, it's everyone. Farm and Island is probably the best. They got them on all their trucks. And yeah, I mean, those stickers are free, so even if they say, oh, my truck's in the shop, they can, as I said, they can ask for 20 of them, if, even if they only have 10. But there is a number to call the St. Paul. Yes, yeah. Yep, April Russ is our LSP coordinator. Yes. Yep. 
Yep. And she'll take care of it. Believe you me. You guys are up an email here yeah. already. <laughs> yes. So one of one of their employees uses his personal vehicle and is towing a say a sail lift, bringing into the into the launch pad. Now, are they required to have? They may not have the sticker in the window, but I would ask them for their paper permit because if they're working, they need to have that permit with them. So all the employees for this particular LSP or any LSP. Yeah. really needs to go through the same classes that we did then. Uh, so it's a slightly different training that they go through. Yeah, but same. they they go, they, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's like a one hour thing that they go through, um, but it's, they, they do take an online training. Yeah, you guys have delegated authorities, so that's the only reason why your training takes so long. I'm just looking at a bunch of those guys, I, I swear they just pick them off the street that day. Uh, but please, please let, like if people are not, abide, like if they're like coming in repeat offenders, right, they don't have their permits, if they don't have, you know, certain, like they don't have their permits or they're violating, like they're, they're not following the laws when they're coming in, please let Janelle and Jessica know that. Like if you have those repeat offenders, because there are processes that we are doing within the DNR that they may be revoking people's permits this year. Good. So it, it's it's actually written out there. So there are some LSPs that their permits may be revoked, and that means that they cannot do business in Minnesota. Yeah. So if you have those repeat violators, please let them know. We'll be seeing them on the tablets, but that that's something that they need to know also. And my friendly reminder, just because they have a sticker in a window doesn't mean that they're up to date. They have dates on them yeah. for years. Yeah, yep. just make sure it's a current year Yep. All right, when you're performing the inspection, the DNR obviously, when you go your hands on this, so I'll make a little more sense. It's nice to do a little more hands on here. Make sure there's no aquatic, uh, excuse me, make sure there's no attached AIS, no watering compartments, no aquatic plants on the watercraft. Ask the boater if there's live bait on board. If they say yes, remind them that once that bait is out on the lake, it's considered lake water and they will need to dump that water before leaving the access. You are not required. I know some inspectors have and do bring water with them to give to these boaters. You are not required to do that at all. They are expected to be smart enough to bring their own extra water so they don't have to dump their bait. Otherwise, they're dumping their bait out if they don't have new water to put that in. Ask the boater to lower the motor on the ground to drain the water. Ask them about live wells on board and if it's dry. Inform them that it's illegal to transport water. And if the boater, the boat has been in another lake within 24 hours, inspect all areas of that boat. You're really checking it close. Ask jet ski users to turn on and run their motor for five to eight seconds. Inform them that this will not harm their motor if they run it. Um, if they absolutely refuse, move on. Um, I think most generally are okay, but uh, check the trailer and bulkers for attached AIS and aquatic plants. If AIS or plants are easily removed by hand, suggest a decontamination. Aren't easily removed by hand, suggest that decontamination be done. Um, depending on that, it's not a suggestion. It's essentially a, it's a requirement. You need to get that removed. Um, hopefully there's a decon very close. Um, quick picture, where are you going to look for all this stuff? The vehicle? Yes. When they're backing in, there could be aquatic or AIS attached on the back end of their vehicle, something you might not think about, the top of the trailer there, and then of course the boat itself. Uh, only suggest the decontamination when there is attached AIS or aquatic plants and they aren't removable by hand. If the watercraft has been launched in another lake within less than five days, highly suggest it, suggest it when it's less than 24 hours that they've been in another water body, or if a watercraft is exit. Exiting a zebra mussel infested lake. Maybe you don't see any with your, like with, when you're checking it when they're exiting. Um, but if you know that lake is infested, just let them know, hey, you don't have to go do a decon, but I'm going to suggest it because we are infested in this lake. Here's where the closest one is located. Um, if the watercraft is from out of state, another highly suggest they get that done. You can't deny launch and force the watercraft users to get a decontamination. That's why it's important to use those words, highly suggest and educate them on the benefits of the decon and how it will kill AIS and protect our lake. Additional recommendation, spray, rinse, dry. Some invasive species are small and difficult to see at the access. To remove or kill them, take one or more of the following precautions before moving to another water body, especially after leaving zebra mussel and spiny, waterfully infested water. 
Spray with high pressure water, rinse with very hot water, dry for at least five days, run the motor and personal watercraft for a few seconds to discharge that water before leading the access, uh, transport fish on ice and be prepared, bring a cooler, same with like the bait. They need to be prepared, bring something to put that bait in so they don't get rid of it. Violation procedure, if there is a violation, um, you must fill out the AIS violation form in your manual. It's not in your manual, it might be by now, but it was one of those sheets that was laying in front of you that I showed you at the beginning. If there are zebra mussels attached, try to help remove them. If they aren't removable by hand, then I launch and fill out the transport form which is another one of those forms I gave you. There's two different ones. There's a transport form for watercraft, and there's another one for like LFP providers with docks and lifts, things like that. So make sure you're using the right form. Um, if they aren't removable, then I launch and fill out the transport form, direct them to the closest decon unit. It's important to know where your decons are. Okay, where am I? Where's the closest decon to where I'm at? Um, this is the same for aquatic plants, but you don't have to report an AIS violation for aquatic plants, just zebra mussels. So only for zebra mussels, fill out that violation form, do the DNR survey correctly, get that form to us right away. We, we need all of that within 24 hours, otherwise there's nothing to need. Jessica, why, when we give them that um, permit mm -hmm. to take it to the decon or home, mm -hmm. why don't we fill it out before they leave? I mean, you give them, so they could go weeks and then put a date on it. Yeah, there are dates. I, mean, I, I just don't understand that. It's a little bit different looking this year. Does it look like there's different lines on it than prior no, years? No, but you don't have to have it filled out. You just hand them a blank <clears throat> one and they go on their way. The thing I do is I put the date on it, today's date on it, so they. Well, yeah, the idea just throw the date on we, it. Yeah, we were taught just hand them that form. Yeah, that's what I've always heard too, just hand yeah. it to them. So, and I mean, is she coming back? Yeah, or she's doing that. Like she will be back for sure for by one o'clock to do okay. a little bit of training at the beginning of the next oh, one. Well, you yeah, ask her that question? Yeah, if anything, yeah, not that date down. I'll find out for sure. But yeah, that's a good point because if you're just handing it to them, they can hold on to it. So that form allows them to leave the access with potentially zebra mussels attached, but they're saying, I'm going to get a decon or I'm going home and I'm going to clean this up before I go somewhere else. Yeah. So, yeah, no, they always do. Um, so if they're driving down the road and they get pulled over, because that's you can't drive, you can't transport that AIS. So if they're driving down the highway and a sheriff sees that or a deputy, whatever, they're going to pull them over because they see that on their boat. And if they have that form, kind of like their get out of jail free card, because they could say, exactly. I'm going to get a decon. Yep. So that's what that transport form is. I've always filled them out. You're not required to fill it out, but yeah. They can make yeah. um, report that violation by to us by texting a picture of the AIS violation report if you're able to fill that form out and send well, us a picture. So are we going to know where the decons are and if they're available that day? Um, so at each landing, there's multiple ways. You can go on the DNR website. It's updated on our website. We will send you a page <coughs> every week that tells you. We're going to get our mobile decon schedule out for the whole season here very soon. Cross Lake is always there. Go Lake's always there. There is a decon location thing in your manual. I don't know what page it's on, um, but there's some that are always in the same location. It's just some mobile decons that move. So our two and the DNR has mobile decons that will be at different landings. And the um, mobiles are going to be out seven days a week, or they're just going to be out weekends. Or? Ours are out just weekends. The DNRs, I think, have a few more days than just weekends. But they're always different locations, so we always have to go out to those maps and check and look at them. And the, the one in Cross Lake is only open on weekends. Correct. Yep. Yes. The landing in Nisswa, Nisswa Lake had a DMR decon on this morning when we came through town. Did it? Yes, yes. I was wondering if they were going to get one there. <coughs> so they are out and out. They are. Um, so get us that AIS violation form as soon as possible somehow if you see us if, or call us and be like I can't text you a picture can you come get it or how can I get this to you ASAP because we need that within 24 hours. Can I just one more thing? Mm -hmm. One of the things that we're trained is that we are public relations we're trying to teach people and be nice and for anybody new I would bring a couple gallons of water with you this weekend because it you know you have to go to a a loan officer to get you know 
shiners. And when they come in and you tell them you have to dump the water out, and they've got $20 worth of shiners in there, they're not going to be very happy. And that's going to be lead to not being happy with us and Crow Wing and this whole program. So for a couple of gallons of water to give them just to keep their fish up or minnows alive until they get to some other water, I, it would save a huge headache and complain and yelling and upset people. Cold water. Cold, cold water. Yeah, don't let it sit in the sun and bake. Right, their right. Their right. But I, I, for sure, I, for sure, I would have them this weekend. I mean, yeah, the water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, once you have sent us the violation report, obviously you're going to fill out the, derb the, the survey and it's going to report the violation that way, but we need to know as well because we're not going to see that right away. The DNR will see it once you upload it, but if we don't do this within 24 hours, like I said, there's nothing we can do. Um, if you're unable to reach us within 24 hours, contact the conservation officer. At, we have the number in your manual. I didn't put it up here because I thought it would change, but it didn't. Um, so it's in your manual, and we'll get it to you if you have questions. Uh, you must upload the AIS violation survey data on the tablet by the end of the day with pictures, license plate, etc. Um, so you'll take pictures with your tablet if there's a violation. Um, this is, I don't think, the right one anymore. Oh, maybe it is. Um, so I don't think I printed this one for you guys. Use a complaint information record and observation report provided to you, fill it as completely as possible. After reporting, contact us. We will need this completed form to follow up with the DNR. Because once you report that as a violation in your survey, they're going to be contacting us to get more information. I did not print that one. This one before, I'm sure remember. <laughs> you get one of those. Filled out as well as an example. One of these? Yes. Um, yeah, we should have one saved because I know the other one I think is just our internal one. Um, so maybe she stopped doing the other one and started doing this, is why. <coughs> but this is the one we need filled out. The so wolf we'll, in their rounds this weekend, they'll bring some to whoever they meet. Otherwise, we'll catch in next weekend. Or if you're in the area and you don't have any and you're in town and want to stop in, stop in here anytime and get more stuff from us. Um, these look a little bit different now. I didn't put new screenshots up here, but you have the newest ones. I went out to the DNR website. They just don't have that blue bar, and they're just formatted very slightly different. So these are your transport forms. Um, so, like I said, there's one for, you probably can't see it because I barely can, one's for watercraft and one's for boat lifts. Boat lifts, docks, those kinds of things. Essentially kind of the same form, but you want to make sure you're giving them the right one. This is that one we were talking about. Do they fill this out or do we just hand it to them? Because it's the end of a blank one and they just hold on to it for two weeks and use it and use it and use it. Um, so the general permits um, themselves, they have to go with the watercraft user. So I generally, what I did was I had a clipboard and I had it on the clipboard and I would be like, here, fill this out. And then I take my clipboard and my pen back from them and I'm like, now that goes with you. I take this, you know, and then that stays with them. If they got caught on the road and that permit is not filled out, they get in trouble. It's it's not it's it's not valid at that point. So, um, but this permit is free and available on the DNR's website. So if somebody says, "Oh, this is way too much work," like right, they took it home and they were going to decon it at home or clean it at home, right? And they decide that it's way too much work and they want to take it someplace else to have it decontaminated to like a lake service provider or to us, right? They can print off another one of these from the DNR's website, fill it out, and they won't get a ticket. So, did I answer your question? Perfect. Um, I'm going to apply here so you guys have some time for lunch. Protect our lakes. Educate those boaters. Uh, leave the water at the lake. Drain water from the boat. Motor live wells. Bait buckets before leaving the lake. Clean your rig. Remove those plants, mud, other debris from the boat trailer. Uh, dry it out. Do not move boat lifts, docks, swim rafts, and other equipment from one water body to another until a minimum of 21 days of drying time has passed. For boats and gears, it's a good idea to dry for at least five days. Spread the word, not the species. Unless it comes from that body of water, don't put it in there. This includes anything from your aquarium. Uh, paperwork guidelines. Surveys must upload by Sunday of each week. I just say at least a minimum of once a week. Um, but yeah, if you're working the weekend, upload them. Sunday's a good day because typically that's the last day of work for you guys for the week, unless you're working weekdays. But typically that's your last day of work for the weekend. So you're uploading those surveys, connecting to Wi-Fi. Submit your hours every Friday. 
Make sure your hours are coded to the correct lake. Do your daily totals match your scheduled hours? Did you submit your hours for approval? Just verifying everything looks correct. And then those other forms we went for went through the transport violation and the Army Corps of Engineers service agreement. Uh, this is our inspection quality assurance evaluation. During the season, we will do at least one of these, if not two, with every inspector we have. We will come out and kind of go through everything on this list just to make sure you're doing the protocols correctly, giving you tips on how to do things differently if you're doing them incorrectly. Uh, this is on page 41 in your manual so you know what we're doing when we're out there. We're going to skip the quiz because it's uh, noon, but feel free to jump in there whenever you want and take it over the weekend. Um, uh, we have over 400 water bodies and only 26% of them are designated as a, infested with AIS. 83 of these water bodies have zebra mussels, 21 with Eurasian water milfoil, 1 with water flea, spiny water flea, 2 with lost snails. We are at high risk for starry stonewort. There is lakes very close to us, cats, um, I don't remember all the others, but it is very close to us. So that's a, one we're on high alert for. In 2022, we performed a total of 538,000. That's not right. That's a lot. I have an extra number in there. I think it's 58,895 watercraft inspections. Yeah, half a million and going, going. Statewide, that's what we did. Statewide, we did 538,000 watercraft inspections. You were amazing, guys. Sorry about that. We're still number one in the nation, though. Colorado. That's amazing. Sorry about that. Uh, zebra mussels, almost everyone knows what these things look like. Um, they came in from the Great Lakes. Uh, we have 588 water bodies in Minnesota with zebra mussels, 83 in Crowan County. The major impacts, they encrust equipment, they had boat motors, hulls, uh, which could reduce the performance, costly to clean and repair. Swimmers and pets can cut their feet on zebra mussels. A lot of people in here have probably cut their feet on it. It hurts. Um, they filter tiny food particles out of the water, which can reduce available food for larval fish and other animals. Um, I speed through a lot of this. It's in your manual. You have the PowerPoint, too. Eurasian water milfoil. This is native to Europe and Asia, first discovered here in the uh, 1900s. It was likely introduced through the spread um, of movement of watercraft. It was first recorded in Lake Minnetonka in 1987. It is dense mats at the water surface. It inhibits water recreationists. Obviously, it's not easy to get your boat through that, depending on your boat. Tiny water flea, a native to Europe and Asia, first found in the Great Lakes again in 1987. It was first discovered in Minnesota in 1990. We have one lake infested with spiny water flea, and that's Mille Lacs. Um, so this is another one we're really watching for, especially when you're on Mille Lacs, checking for that fishing lines, watching for that when they're coming out of Mille Lacs. It clogs the islets of fishing rods and prevents fish from being landed. They prey on native zooplankton. Um, they do not provide a good food source for native fish. Star stonewort, another one. We don't have it here. We don't want it here. Um, it was first confirmed in Minnesota in August of 2015 in Lake Corona. Uh, 22 lakes in Minnesota are listed as infested with starry stonewort. So it's not too bad. We're trying to keep it that way. Um, Really watch for this one. Here's a few pictures. Again, these are all in your manual. In the back of your manual as well, whether you look at it on the iPad or in the paper one, we have the DNRs, um, or actually I think it's U of M. Um, there's a whole bunch of AIS. There's like a whole page with a bunch of pictures for each type of AIS. Most of them we don't have here, but we just put the whole book in there. Uh, sorry, stormwort is again dense mass, dense mats at the water surface, which inhibits water recreationists again. Um, faucet snails, they're small, they're the more coiled snails. They are uh, introduced through the Great Lakes again. They uh, graze and filter algae from the lake. They can, females can produce about 300 eggs, which they on rocks, wood, and shells. They were found in Lower South Lawn for the first time in Growing County last year, the year before, I don't remember. Uh, it can cause morality and dust, mortality in ducks and birds when the waterfall consumes the snail and attacks, to the, attacks the internal organs. Skip in the quiz again. Oh, we're done. Oh, I did it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, so yeah, if you guys want to take those quizzes for fun, we understand that well, you can't do it at the landing because you need internet. 
just so you kind of know if you caught on to everything, it's not, I'm not looking at who took it, what the grades were, nothing like that. It's not required. It just helps you to make sure you caught on the presentation. Um, so yeah, those of you that have been here three years or more, you do not have to go to the DNR training this afternoon. If you want to stay, ask a couple questions, you're more than welcome. Um, but we're going to meet back here at one, everyone, so we can go through, um, even if you're, oh my gosh, how am I going to wear this? So if you are doing DNR training at one o'clock, you were supposed to meet across the road. We're all going to meet back here just to make sure our tablets are all working correctly because they had some issues this morning. So come back here at one o'clock. And if you are actually, before before people run off, um, I'm just going to set this on the back table. If you are required to do the one o'clock training across the street, can you please sign in? I'm hoping that you guys will all show up across the street at one o'clock or here and then go back over there at one o'clock. Um, I just want to be able to provide them with their letters, their training record letters, so that they can request authorization for all of you guys so you guys can actually work tomorrow. Um, so I just want to be able to provide that. So if you are required to do the one o'clock training, please sign in on the back table before you leave. Thank you. Any more questions? That's all Crowing County no, training. How do we get out of this and back to the instruction for Excuse me. Just the bottom. Yes. Boxes are everything. Three years and more, you said we are all done. We don't have to report back at one. We do not, unless you want to ask your DNR some questions at the beginning of the next screen when you're done. Also, a clock. I guess I probably need that. You are. You are. And you said you QuickBooks? QuickBooks does not that's um, Okay, so that was the, the thing that you sent me was that's how I got it. Yeah, so, you don't have to be I'm sorry, you can't talk about people. No, no, and we all have very similar names. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just realized that. Here's my question. I just worked last year, though. Yeah, so come here at 1 o'clock. We'll make sure everybody's tablets have the survey on it, and then we'll go across. Okay. Yep. Come here first. Yeah. You can just come up here. Hold on. I don't know. I haven't really decided. Probably go and grab some someplace. Hold on, Nikki. No. The only thing that we need is just your tablet. Essentially, we're going to provide a bunch of other stuff. I had to do a little bit. I was going to do it a little bit more. I was going to do it a little bit more. I was going to do it a little bit more. I was going to do it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, we're gonna have some right. then so we're gonna go right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Okay, so let us know. I know some were mentioning the like, grass are all a little bit Yeah, Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I 
Yep. Ah. Oh, okay. Yep, just call this number. Okay. One of us should answer. If not, leave a message. Okay. Yep, for six. Where? Oh, there it is. I'm trying to find my error here. What is your name? I have to. Cassandra. Cassandra. Uh, so I can't work on Saturdays. You won't. Uh, you'll have to go yeah. on a computer. Yeah. Do you have a computer at home? No, the computer was broke out. It's broken. Work. Okay. She has an iPad. She has an iPad. Yeah. 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 Yes, so he'll have to probably yeah, use his wife's iPad and I'll have to sit down with him. You'll, yeah, you'll have to get quick time set up because that's where we do okay. our scheduling. Otherwise, I don't know okay. how else we would get you your schedule. Like I said, I can work every Sunday. Yes, yeah. so probably. Probably me. Okay. That's our, oh my gosh, she looks really bad. Nope. And then I work at the launches unless you know <laughs> there. I don't know. Okay. So when um okay when your wife comes back on the weekend, yeah. can we bring you right now. It took a while. <laughs> Next week. Okay. So she my name is yeah. office. So and we can try to get quick time. Oh, it's me. Is that you? IPad, yeah. you will need to utilize that. Number. We're yeah. seeing your schedule. You know oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. it's all in that okay. yeah, app. Next week, yeah. And we got to get that on right. your yeah. iPad yeah. to yeah. get to the schedule. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. But what about this Sunday? Unless you got it. This blocked. Sunday, I don't have you scheduled no. for work. Oh, you don't? Okay. No. Okay. Nope. So this week, you don't have to worry about that. Okay. I um, But we will have to get that on the iPad yeah. so that in the future you can see when you're going to work. Okay. Um, okay. Question. Sure. Of scheduling time off. I have a day that I've got to Okay. I'm this far. How do I add the yep. day? Okay, I'm going to write it down day. and then you'll take it right there and yeah. pick the day that you want where it says May 12th right now. Okay. Uh, oh, you're adding another day. Nope. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 You had, had it. A, I had it as of 10 seconds ago. Come back to you. <laughs> and then I can, I can call up AIS and get everybody I know in there. Yeah. They got a text us for working or? Huh? Are they going to text emails where, where, where we're going to be working? Or? Um, we got to get you in QuickTime. Okay. Um, everything's on QuickTime. It's all in there. You got my time work on it now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then you can see it. Okay. Can you figure out your question? So you were mentioning about limiting uh, Wi-Fi usage and stuff like that for phones and stuff. If I keep my phone just like completely off the Wi-Fi, that's all right. If I just use my own data for whatever I need. Your personal phones, you do whatever you want with. It's the tablets that are just for work purposes. So it's not like bring it home and I'm going to watch YouTube and scroll Facebook. Stuff uh, most people do. <laughs> but that's what we were talking about. Your phones, you're fine. Okay. I'll just say request. Yeah. Um, say attending. There you go. Okay. There you go. Okay. 
Thank you. Because being totally dumb on that, because it's like I know I did this last time. I can't remember what I did. I'll give it to you again. I'll give it to you again. I'll give it to you again. Next week, come into our office. Give me your call. We can set up a certain date. There is Monday or Thursday coverage. Crowing Lake won't have any. Upper and lower, I think they have some, but it's not a lot. Um, so unless you're wanting to travel to, I know Hubert's and Bay Lake, and then up in the Cross Lake area, they have a day coverage. I also think I'd be in the very high up, but they're far and low, but I wind up having a day coverage. Okay, yeah, I know they have some, it's not a ton, but they have some. It'll tell you where you're working, where your schedule is. Okay, it's like inconsistent days. I think it's days where they know it's busier, and then days where they know there's fishing tournaments, they have extra coverage. So it's not like every Monday, Tuesday, or anything like that. And from St. Paul, yeah. Can they reach out? They're not a part of our plan. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. If I don't have those extra days, they're probably going to be taking a couple of months. Okay, I'm sure they have like a lot of Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay, good. 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 Okay, Basically, just the more hours I can get working, the better. Okay, no problem. If we have them and it works, we're willing to get the data. Yeah, you're welcome. Sure. How do I make sure that you guys know that I Yeah. Um, would you, when you say dead spot, do you think you would have to do a call out? I know that for sure. Uh, that's a good question. I mean, it's getting kind of spent. Uh, okay. And I know that they're along 169 right. and along yeah. Mille Lacs. There are several dip spots for this. Okay. I could say okay. Steamboat. Oh, yeah, I have Steamboat too. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Another question? Yeah, I will. All right. Let's take the other question. Which one's the other one? Please ask for the uh, no. Do you have any? <laughs> Do you just have all their names? And I will just I'll call fourteen. So I'm gonna put the letter that way. And then um uh, yeah, as far as did they all show up though? Oh yeah. 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 A few people got that, so I think there might have been some kind of glitch because you are not alone. We're going to look at all the time cards, so you'll get paid for it. 
Oh, I don't know. I'm worried. Right. I guess I just didn't want to be the lone wolf. The lone wolf? Nope, you're not. I had a few people come to me and say that. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That I used to get last year. Right? That is easier to play. I used to work for the, the city of Breezy. Used to do it. Then growing county, then like don't have it, but no. I actually I like that one pretty good because I worked six till noon. Yeah, the whole thing is play. Then they grab and shove it inside there. I like it over. They got their own nine six. Yeah, you can. Most people don't like them, so we stop putting them in the bag. If you want to tell them, yeah, I'm kind of surprised the way they do stuff. Uh, they just don't fill up water. They're good for waiting. At nine o'clock, most of the people in the bag. Yeah, they're not going to be on cross the winter. They have to make fast turnouts, so they have to make all care at six. Mm -hmm. Every goddamn boat was in on the lake, and they got this huge parking lot. There was a parking spot for anybody else to park. That's why it's after four o'clock till they start coming out of the lake. Uh, the trout's okay. I, that one normally don't get a lot of traffic either. Oh, kind of okay. there way. There's there's quite a bit of parking. Okay. 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 Oh, 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 uh, all right, for yourself or for the board? Right. Yeah, I play. Really? I'm going to play again. <laughs> <laughs> one piece of paper. Some will hand for it and they love it. So. They didn't think I'd have to go across the tree because yeah. it worked before, but I didn't work last year, so I guess they want me to go back over. They don't want to get paid for it. Yeah. All right. Better go get something. I'm going to try quick. Yeah. Go get a snack. I don't think I've ever had so many sticky notes in my life. <laughs> uh, do you guys always have something to eat in your breaks in between? Something to hold you over? I'm right. Oh, Mark. That's the one I'm going to have, so I'm right there with you. <laughs> Are they all gone, Leonard? Uh, Are they all gone? Yeah, those are mine down the car. I was just going to look at something. Oh, cool. there's one right here. Oh. So official and all your garb, so I was kind of waiting for you to start lecturing us. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my first year too, so yeah. We'll see how this works. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, what well, was the last job of my class? Roofing. Roofing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't ever done that for a living, but I had a couple of houses that had to have it done, and I wanted to save some money, so yeah. Anyway. What's that? Get back to that anytime soon. Oh, no. Oh, no, I haven't seen them yet. Oh, That's what the last yeah. house I did. I wouldn't but think so. I think it'd, it'd probably be pretty easy. And, uh, we brought up like gallon jugs of water. I never left the roof to take a pee. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it'll all come out here before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I got that. Yeah. You definitely sweat. So, anyway. Take it home, take it out of the bag, and sit in there. You'll we'll probably go together pretty fast. But most, mostly didn't clean up because we did like we far off the old ground. Sure. Huh? I was a guy down at the ground, picking up a bunch of wood and put it in the trailer. Sure. 
And of course, half the time you can't even get the trailer near the house, so you have to walk like. Oh, yeah. And that's a wheelbarrow thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you do any tin? We did my first year that I worked. We did one tin. Okay. Um. It was a bit of a nightmare. Okay. Uh, I got a garage and I want to put tin on it. So, what company did you work for? It was like it was a family company oh, okay. out in Michigan. Oh, nobody I had ever been involved with that. So okay, so well, I live up in Pine River. So this one company is now like two people. Oh okay. Because this last year was my last year working there. I quit, and then the, one of the other guys on the crew quit and my uncle and uh, yeah. I'm all with them. Oh, are you? Yeah. All right. We'll see each other around maybe on occasion. You take care. I do. Charlie, by the way. My name is Charlie. I think there's more. Hello. So if you haven't been here in the early session, you want to sit somewhere where you have a flag. You already have the bag with your iPad and stuff. Yeah, I think that's good. Sure. Yeah, I mean you can move it if you want, but you want you want all the paperwork and the flag. So we just have a video type thing. Yeah, it's going to be a video training for three hours. But this is the equipment that you're going to need. So make sure you have the flag bag. Yep. Yeah, you grab that stuff in your seats. What about the vest and stuff? Yeah, you're going to need a vest. Yeah, so the ball comes in the first section. Vests are made size. They get bigger as you go down. Like you can show off. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just saying it's cute. Oh, yeah. I All the, like, and yeah, I 
Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, you can go to the table, they have a right. <laughs> What's your name? Rick. 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 Yeah. Oh, I didn't get it. Yeah. I don't know. So so you know I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't know. 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 I don't you are or you're not? I will take I think they only want you to take one hat and one vest. Vests get larger as you go down. Steve. Rick, I think it's like small, medium, large, extra large. They're kind of like combo. Oh, have you had any hip surgery or anything? No, not yet. Not yet? Yeah. Okay. I got a knee up. <laughs> okay. Uh, one, one, yeah, some days it's good and some days it's not bad. Okay. No? I just got a hip five weeks. Oh. That's what I mean. A lot of people walking around with cane here. <laughs> a couple of them, I think another one was in the legs and shirts and did 16 days and all the others were pretty nice. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going to tell you. I mean, I didn't know that. Three or four years ago, they shut me down. I don't know why they shut me down all the way down. So, wait. So I got there and I asked this guy, is this pretty mobile? And he said, yeah. I don't think he put anything in. I said, what ditch me in the world? I guess it was one time. Yeah, I've seen some. I mean, they weren't able to go. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y